too. I'll watch here. All right, all right, all right. We should be live. We'll wait for it to pop up. So now we all sit here for a moment. While people actually will see this later, but it's not showing yet. Always fun. Yeah, it'll be it'll be fine. Fun time. Fine, fine. There we go. All right, we're live. Hello, everybody. If it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer, and that must mean it's time for another episode of Warhammer Weekly, and this is the one we've been waiting for. I'm not even introducing people. We're getting straight to talking about what it is. We're not going to talk about it yet. We got news and stuff, but it's it's time to walk, Hel folks. It's time to walk. Hel Hello, Tom, friends. Go. Hello, friends. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Domus. Domus is our guest. <laughs> Domus has a beautiful... Iron Jaws Army. If Vince isn't going to host, I'll do it. I'm okay, here we go. Still. Thank you. No, no, you're Whoa. you're not doing your job. Okay. Uh, news for the week. Oh, wow. uh, Tom's taking control. I'll just wow. sit back and relax on this one. Yes. How about we let Domus actually introduce himself? This is why you're not the host, Tom. Domus, welcome, brother. It's good to have you in the show. Hey, Vince. How are you? I couldn't be better, my man. I know that I'm. I I there was as soon as I knew this book was coming out, I think I reached out to you immediately and said. You're, you're coming on the show, right? Because there's no one else I would rather have. I love that. I love that. Uh, it was time. Domus and I have a shared love of Iron Jaws that goes well back. Uh, and, and we've bonded over this army. And now, very excited about its newest incarnation. This is, it's, this is truly the book I've been waiting on. And I've never been happier to be wrong in a prediction. When I said <laughs> that I thought that the GHB-19 Allegiance would just be what they did and they kept it for the book. Nope. Nope. It got so much more fun and dynamic and interesting. And we'll talk about it all tonight. It's going to be. Wonderful. I really enjoyed that prediction. So I mean, <laughs> yes, yes, I wasn't I'm making sure, sure. that and the city's predictions. I was like, okay, this is cool. Yeah. Hey, we were pretty yeah. good on the city's predictions. We did like immediately before the, the book dropped Tom and I were pretty good. Eric, not so much. But but that's okay. We're just waiting on the Maw Tribes, and then we'll be done because we've got our we've got our three sets of predictions. Right. It's now. so funny because everybody thought I was a buzzkill for my predictions on the city. Uh, but you were one hundred percent correct. I was one hundred percent correct, and it, it's a great book. Right. Exactly. Like, I don't it's know why everybody, everybody had such a problem with it. Like, just because there aren't new models doesn't mean it's not a dynamic book. No, folks. absolutely not. Like. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, I agree completely. Let's do some news. We talked cities last week, and I'll I'll talk about cities a little more in hoppy time. So, uh, so let's talk about uh, Rumor Engine. Yeah, it's up on the screen right now. You both can't see it, but they can. It it's a sale or something. Uh, you want my prediction? Sure. Okay. This is the Angel Elves. And okay. This is like a harp. Yep. No, it's a it's a bow. It is a bow. It has the same recurve sort of strings as like yeah. some of the other uh, uh, Elfy Achillean I IDK stuff. Okay. Like yep. it has the same string connectors. And the unit, because you're like, okay, well, why does it have three strings? Well, I'll answer that question for you. You ready? You notice they're all pulling yep. together. Because it's, they have multiple arms, because they're truly angels. No, no, no. They just have a big, <laughs> giant bow. It's a, like, and it's going to be a very large a angelic elf who's strong enough to pull back like a triple bow is going to be what it is. Because even though in reality that wouldn't work, like physics don't actually work that yeah, way. That's not how that works. In the mortal yes. realms, anything is possible. You know what also doesn't work? Floating copper balls that make ships float full of magic hey, gas. Hey, hey, shut your mouth. Um, I, my money is that it's another Slanesh Harpist. Sure. So I'm, <laughs> An alternate sculpt yeah. for the... <laughs> they're gonna Slanesh Harpists are like Primaris lieutenants now. We get a new CW one every three months. trolling hard. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think that's legitimate, uh, Domus. I think that that may very well be the case. Yep. So I, I think it is just a giant bow from the angel elves. I really do. That little, sure. elf, the little elvish signifier. We're going to have giant elvish flying archers. They'll be like bigger, like Stormcast, because they'll be infused with the power of Heish, recrafted by Teclas to be larger, stronger elves, which will be the first good elf that they've ever made, probably. That's not like a, that's not a daughter of Cain. There you go. I don't know how to respond to you. <laughs> um, uh, what else? Uh, so we also had a new, uh, like night quester. Yeah. So yeah. that dude awesome. looks like he's ready to do some business. Dacian, Dacian. I don't know how to say his name. Dacian. Yes. Anvil. Kind of an on the nose yeah. name. 
but that's fine. <laughs> What'd you think I'll of that sculpt uh, there, Domus? Do you like that new guy? I do. I like it a lot. I like I like a lot of those. Uh, that was the PAX model, right? Yeah, that's. Right. I think that was yeah. PAX Australia. Let, I think it was the PAX Australia model. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that. I like a lot of those. So. And they did say he would. We would all have some ability to get our hands on him soon in the. Oh, article, did they? So. Yep. I missed that. So hopefully he comes out in some way. Um, I'll tell you the one I want. I can't wait for my store's birthday because I want that liberator, uh, oh, the, yeah. the girl liberator who's like in the yep. open stance with the missing sort of yep. uh, bracer and the shield or, or the either shield and sword. I love that model so much. Like I want to paint that one yeah. so bad. But it's just it's like sharp. my store's birthday isn't until like May of next year or something <laughs> stupid. So. Ma- Mine is February, Vince, so if you want an early one, let me know. Yeah, I do, but just mark it on your calendar now. Go down there, buy it. Yes, I want it. Great. If someone else in the world has a birthday coming up soon around their store, I will extend the same offer to you. Reach out to me. Like, uh, ironically, mine is like on the weekend of my birthday. Like It's always like oh. one or two days off of my actual birthday, so it feels like a real celebration. Nice. Um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's meaningful. That's why I remember it. Um, yeah. So other news. Do we really have anything else? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Oh, there mm-hmm. was just one other small yeah. news item. Uh, <laughs> so the uh, Mortis and Soul Mason. That's what uh, it is. the yeah, new that bo- was the, other the news move. Item. The new Bone Walker. Bone. The new. Sl- uh, what, is, what are they called? Uh, frog. Bone the new Bone. frog. The oh, he looks like, like Slon. Yeah. Yeah, he's like a resurrected slon. That's what they are. And they just long for their hovering chariot so much that they make little walkers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the logic. In-game converter. Yeah. <laughs> he's converting his own rides. Absolutely, yeah. His, totally. Somebody mentioned that, that like the, the, I bone, saw the, the bone daddies are like meta, meta <laughs> players of Warhammer because they do their own in-world conversions. Yeah, I saw that. It was awesome. Who, whoever mentioned that is genius because they're absolutely correct. Uh, I also saw somebody did like a little Photoshop where they took out the legs and replaced it with just like swirling spirit host bits. Yeah, and I that like looks that pretty good. Yeah. Um, so, but I mean, you know, some people really like the him with his walking chair. Some people nope. don't. It doesn't seem like that hard of a conversion to pull the legs off and have his chair floating on ghosts. So you're never short of ghosts in Night Haunt type stuff. You can get lots of ghosts. They're everywhere. <laughs> Uh, I can vouch for this, uh, having painted and doing some conversions. And I wanted to make, like, for my Warlord uh, for Holy Havoc, like, I wanted to make a, like, a mini Mortark um, of my own, like, using the Harbinger, or not the Harbinger, the, um, I don't know, the the, the, the Knight of Shrouds on uh, Steed. Sure. And, uh, and, like, there's just so many ghost bits to choose from. <laughs> like, they're just everywhere. Yep. Yep. It's, um, it's ghosts everywhere. It's all ghosts. It's ghosts all the, all way, the down. way down. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, and then also there's something about a white dwarf, uh, Seleski, Slanesh stuff. Yeah, man. Vince, do you want to talk about that? Sure. I'm always happy to talk about Slanesh. So, this army, which has gotten no love and really no attention since it came out, uh, <laughs> undervalued. Nobody really, you know, I mean, I just, I'm happy to see some attention finally being put onto Slanesh. Uh, it, it really just, it came out and it was just, it was gone immediately. No one, no one. You're a terrible person. Have I told you that before? <laughs> so anyway, yes. Yeah, so we got the new Seleski, uh, vengeful throng, whatever it is. That's the name of the big battalion, but her, yeah. whatever her yep. allegiance is called the host of Seleski. And it's a really interesting host. And, uh, you know, so like, obviously everybody lost their mind. The nature of how this thing works is you can get some bonus command points if the number of mortal units is equal to the number of demon units. That's quite a cost, actually. <laughs> because you're generally going to have like three mortal units in any... Two or three mortal units in any mm-hmm. Slanesh army, which is your Hellstriders. Um, like, your sort of... The most optimal hard edge list doesn't really run an equal number. You'd have to weight it down with something else like Chaos Warriors or something. There could be other Marauders, whatever. Um, Marauders would be fine, but you know, you need, you need something and your points are already tight. Um, and then the, uh, and then if you have like 12 units or something or more, I don't remember. And then let me see if it's like 12. I've got it up here. Hold on. Uh, if the number of the army is more than 12, then you get D six command points instead of D three at the start of the game. Okay. That's fine. And Celeste counts as one of each. 
I think Archeon would count as one of each, too, I'm pretty sure, because I think he has both Mortal and Demon keywords. I need to go look at him again, um, so that's kind of fun. Uh, but, like, you know, what everybody got lost in was the fact that they have this Deadly Symbiosis ability where whenever your heroes gain depravity, they gain double depravity, as long as Celeste is alive and within 12 inches of the, of the, the, the thing being generating or being wounded right generating the depravity because being wounded. i know the i know the one thing that we were light on for slanesh armies was depravity sure. absolutely not not really generating enough that number is a pretty underwhelming thing um so you know yeah that's probably a lot of depravity um it is a fairly like weak piece to cinch that on but i mean worst case you do end up with just like uh <laughs> you do end up with just i suppose the normal amount of depravity oh um, Here's what I'll say. This is way weaker than invaders. I know everybody's all obsessed with that double depravity. If you actually build to get the command points, you have naturally weakened your army considerably. Sure. Okay. Um, because there's just like, I I played an army that was Slanesh at a tournament. I've played a lot of games with that tournament army, like a lot of games. And I will tell you that like, you don't have room for extra units. It's not how that goes. You have it like it's packed to the gills with those heroes and then your units and your battalions. And what the problem with this army is, other than that initial, those initial command points, it doesn't really generate command points in the same way. And the power of the Slanesh army comes from, yes, the summoning is great. And yes, the locust is powerful. But like what makes them offensive is literally what makes them offensive. It's the, it's the ability to make your entire army pile in and fight twice. And, like, there were games where I would generate eight or ten command points and blow four or five in a round when I was playing Invaders. You will not get numbers like that in this because you can't take the Supreme Sybarites Battalion. Right. And, you know, there are still something, and you don't have access to the Invaders items, the, like the Rod of Misrule, like the command trait like Glory Hog, right? Like, you don't have your CP engine. Right. You don't have the actual tools that you would want to have for right. those things. And, like, Slanesh piling in and attacking once is much less scary. Keepers will tend to duff every so often. And they can generally make up for that by just fighting again. And then they won't roll bad. Right? Um, but, like, this battalion's cool. I'll probably... Or this, this like, this little allegiance is cool. I'll probably run it for some fun games. Because Celeste is one of my favorite characters ever. It's the cutest couple in the Mortal Realms. I love them. Such a great model, too. It's yeah. so good. They they made me want to make a Slanesh army. But I, I, I held strong and did not. I'm sad. But anyway, like it look, it is what it is. Yes, that double depravity is a lot. You got to huddle everybody around Celeste, and Celeste is generally better off on her own, anyways. Um, and in the end, it's you're you're sinking a lot to a nine wound model with a four up save and no after save. Right. Yep. Okay. So like every time, it's a thing. Well, what I love is that every time we have some powerful piece in the game, that it'll be like some monster that just does like ungodly damage, but all it's got is a four up save. People will like competitive people will look at it and go, well, it's just gonna die. Like the like the the mega boss on Maw Crusher, everybody's just like, well, that thing just died instantly. It's completely not worth it. Who cares that it could wreck an entire enemy army? It just dies instantly. Cause it's just it never mind that it was 14 wounds on a potential three up save, ignoring some kind of rend, blah, 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 blah. Oh no, it just they died instantly. Those got removed top one. Every game I ever played, the Maw Crusher just got removed instantaneously, like he ceased existing. Like he teleported off the board. The number of times I heard competitive players tr trot this line out. Okay. And then all of a sudden we got the nine wound four up save hero. And everybody's like, oh, unremovable. No way we can get rid of that power piece. <laughs> Just the double standard out there amongst people who don't bother to, to like check their priors. So anyway, oh, that's hilarious. Um, how, how do you really feel about events? That's how I feel. Like that's legit how I feel. But uh, let me tell you this: the awesome thing about the article that no one's discussed because everybody got caught in the double depravity is there are four really cool battalions in there. I'll say three really cool battalions in there that are all mortal focused. We haven't had any like Slanesh mortal focused battalions. Mm -hmm. And it actually like there was a lot of people who have Slanesh mortal armies like Chaos Warriors and Chaos Knights and Chariots and stuff who couldn't who didn't really have any good way to use those. Now, all of a sudden, those people have like a way to really use their army. That's cool. And that's fantastic because the battalions are like pretty reasonable. They're not amazing. They're just decent battalions that are all fun. 
and do some fun stuff. And moreover, there's a freaking Soul Grinder Battalion. A Soul Grinder Battalion. One to three Soul Grinders gives them plus one to hit and plus do one it. to save. Do it. Awesome. I have a Soul Grinder that I've had on my shelf waiting to convert over to Slanesh. Now I've got a reason. I couldn't be more excited. <laughs> uh, so, at any rate, it's a, it's a lot of controversy. Uh, I don't personally think that... Like I said, it's better than what's already there. That's the problem. Like, Slanesh is already, yes, too powerful with that depravity and everything else they can do. But a lot of that is off the back of Invaders. Like, Invaders makes the the wheel the, the engine turn. So, there you go. That's my statement. But, you know, if, okay. if you're not playing Slanesh and you're on the outside, it's easy to look over the fence and go, like, everything they have is broken and this is just more broken. Because you have to play, it, like, it's the nuances of an army that you realize as you get into it, right? And that's not sure. me trying to talk down to anybody. It's just me saying, like, I've played a decent amount of games with this army and know kind of the contours of it, I think, pretty well. So. Yeah, the interesting point of this whole conversation was actually not this, but then how it interfaces with, like, the Fire Slayer battalions um, and characters that for Vostar. Um, because a lot of people had as, uh, asserted that those are not, like, tournament legal uh, based on the FAQ. And my question would be, like, well, if, if like, either we don't need to worry about the Slanesh stuff at all because it's not tournament legal, or that other Fire Slayer stuff should be legal. And of course, well, here's the problem. Obviously, the FAQ was wrong. We all agree with that. Like, that FAQ answer is not to be taken literally as it was written. So the, the FAQ that Tom is referencing is the one where it mentions that, like, if something doesn't have a pitch battle, if a unit doesn't have a pitch battle profile, can it be played? No. In, in competitive. No. In match play. Sorry. Right. The answer is right. just no. Which is like, okay, so we all agreed universally to ignore that. Because if we literally took that at its word, like, Gotrek wouldn't be legal. So, duh, we're not doing that. Right. Okay, great. So we and, all... We all and, just and neither would cities of Sigmar. Well, or the, the units. About the review. No, only like the steam tank commander, because it does specifically say units. Those units still have a pitched battle profile in the GHB. The steam tank, the pistoliers, uh, they well, all the have. Well, alleg the allegiances wouldn't be legal. Allegiance aren't units. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so some. Of, I'm sorry. So some of these armies would not be be legal. Correct, it, but it doesn't matter. Again, who cares? That's all dumb. Like the the problem with the Vostark thing is that was it published before the GHB? And I think the answer there is yes, unfortunately. Like I think the G I think that White Dwarf came out like a week before. And so the actual source information is like it says in the GHB if it's not in here or it's it's either it either has to be in here or published later to be legal. And it's a much broader yeah, yeah. thing. And like clearly that's how we all are understanding the rules to work because duh. <laughs> we all understand yeah. that like when they made GoTrek we're allowed to buy him and use him. Duh. You know. Uh, right. don't worry, we'll get to the orcs. Uh, so at any rate, these, uh, this was big news, so it was worthy of discussion. Uh, and yes, also Mr. M Mr. Mephisto is right. They're all kind of Slanesh shows when I'm around. Uh, and the answer is like, yes, this is legal. And frankly, so should the Vosarg thing be, because who cares? It got published. It got published about the same time. Let's all just be happy and play with our toys and not worry about it. How about that? Cool? Totally agree. Great. Moving on. There, I solved the problem. Neat. And, and as always, if you have a question, ask your TO, because your TO will tell you what is appropriate right. at their tournament and what's not. 100%. Yes. Yep. Like, we already have the all the mechanism we need to solve it. We decide to play with our toys, and when we go to a competitive event, we ask the TO if we have any questions. And the TO will be happy to give you an answer. And there you go. See how easy that was? Simple. Bada there. bing, bada boom. All right. I solved the internet. Okay. All right. Great. I do agree with Cinderfall. Uh, that is a good point. The actual challenge to this uh, kind of this stuff like this isn't anything to do with legality. I don't care about any of that crap. It's what? Ha how do I get Vostark now months later if I can't find that copy of White Dwarf and I buy my Fire Slayer's army now, right? Like they should, after some amount of time, like let's say Include two, three months, app. just either put them in the app or make the PDFs available online in the downloads resources thing, right? Mm -hmm. Just something like that so they're easily, so they can easily be grabbed. I don't want to interrupt their sales. Like, cool, give it two, th two, three months to sell, but then just publish them because I, I can't go find an old white dwarf from three months ago. That stuff's like the covers well, been torn off and they sent it back. They they used to they they used to sell white dwarf on in like iBooks, like digitally, <clears throat> like 
I don't know why they still don't offer those things. Like because like for the longest time they were actually doing like all the Warhammer visions and white dwarfs and everything in digitally. And it would make sense to make all those back issues available digitally. Mm-hmm. I mean, like that's just a money revenue source for a couple megabits of like storage. <laughs> sure. All right. So that's all the news. So there you go. And if people don't agree with my take on Slanesh, I completely understand and accept that you can feel free to drop a note in the comments. I'm more than happy to listen. Uh, he won't, he won't actually listen to you, but he will uh, allow you to have that. Your, your, your own perspective. I would certainly, I will certainly listen. I read and respond to every comment. Believe me, I listen. Uh, all right. So, uh, yeah, that's all the news. Let's go to some pick of the week. Domus. What do you want to share with everybody, man? What do you? Doing? Oh, I'm so not prepared for that. I, I figured. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. You gave you gave my pick of the week last week. So uh, <laughs> I did give your you you jumped out early and you were I like, did. "Hey, include this." And the partners at War was awesome. They even reached out and said and said like, "Thanks and stuff." They're awesome people. Everybody. They're knows. they're amazing people, man. Yeah. I, just awesome. If you want to, if you want to make that your pick this week too, I'm okay with it. Well, I would make. I think my pick of the week this week would be um, Bryce and Tristan Gray are running a worldwide escalation league. Mm. Um, Bryce is Moose Geek on Twitter, um, and and the basic deal is there's a Discord and you sign up and you join and you have to for the first month you have to paint a general and write a fluff behind your general. Nice. Uh, so I've joined. I'm going to struggle to get done, but I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> so, it all of a sudden became the middle of October, and I have a ton of things. I still have my Havoc Army to paint, and I have all this stuff to do. Um, but it, it's a really cool idea, and the next month is 500 points, and I think the month after is 1,000. Uh, I may not be right on that, but it's all available on Bryce's Twitter feed. Nice. Nice. I dig it. Awesome. I will link it. I will link his Twitter down in the description. It's really cool. Tommy. So far, it's been really cool. Lots of good stuff. Yes. Tommy, what do you got, buddy? Will Tom remember to take himself off mute? The answer, no. I'm going to pick. Thanks. Uh, the uh, friend of the show, Steve Herner, runs an event that we all love called yes. Holy Havoc. Yes. We have mentioned it. Um, I'm going to promote that event as my pick this week. Well, also Simply because, because Holy Wars registration just went live tonight. Holy Wars registration went live tonight, and there's still a spot at Havoc, which we will be at in a couple weeks. Yes. Are you, are you um, painting for Havoc right now? I am literally painting for Havoc right now. Of um, course, I am, course he is. I am, I am on my last main unit. I still have a bunch of sideboard units that I need to paint, but that's not... Uh, I'm not worried about that right now. I need to have a legal army. And in order to have a legal army, I need to get this unit done. You're way ahead of me. <laughs> <That's not laughs> done. So I'm working on the base right now. There you go. Is that for your black coach? Yeah. I figured. It's going to look like uh, Santa's sleigh. Sure. Or E.T. going across the moon. It's mm. going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Uh, I thought about actually doing like I thought about actually doing when I do a board having like an actual backdrop to the board and have a big moon just so that I can like put like it going across the sky across the moon like E.T. Sure. Because it'd be delightful. You got to play the music then too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to get cue that up on your phone. It's certainly on YouTube. Uh, Two quick statements. I'll have the link to Holy Havoc and to Steve Herner's Twitter down there because I that one spot is still open and Steve will find you a partner. Don't worry. You think, well, there's one spot. It's a partner's event. I don't have a partner. Don't worry. You'll get a partner. It will be a great time. Everybody who comes to Holy Havoc is awesome. I have never had a bad game there ever. And that's mainly and because Tom is always my partner, so there's no chance I can play him, which is the only <laughs> chance I would have of having a bad game. Wow. I mean... I mean, thanks, Vince. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I'll say is this. Vince and I will be there all week. Well, I will be there all weekend. Vince will be there for most of the weekend. And uh, uh, like, we'll, and I, Domus, you're going to be there, right? Yep, I'll be there. Tom and I are partnered up. Sweet. Cool. You guys will have a, a blast. Um, and so, you mean Jake or, or Tom McClure? Never mind. Tom McClure. Yeah. Oh, it's not our first time. Yeah. 
And yeah, it's not your first time, of course. Uh, but we'll be there, and like it's like it's going to be a larger group this year. I think it's going to be sixty. Yep. Um, yeah, thirty. Yeah, right? 30, 30 teams, sixty uh, players because these are doubles. Um, so it's going to be a little bit larger on a like a on a body standpoint, but it's still it, it regardless of how large it is, it feels small. Yeah. Like so much of the event is like sitting around, hanging out in a hotel lobby, like dining room, you know, like just chilling. And so like Vince and I will be around. We'd love to ha hang out with you. I'm sure Domus would extend the same invite. Absolutely. So yes, get out there. And also Holy Wars registration, which I'll also include the link for opened up tonight. You want to get on that list. Uh, that's the single player event that's in like late February, basically February. next year. Yeah. yeah. I, had to, I had to think about it. Uh, we like to call it the the Adepticon primer. Sure. Now here's the fun thing. So do you did you notice Tom that Steve changed the rules because of how we played last time? <laughs> no, no. Go okay. on. So famously last time there's we were both running Daughters of Cain, and we both had awful filth lists, and we sat on this table that was the Temple of Cain, which yeah. buffed our armies to high hey, neck and back. We were role playing. Uh, sure, of course, absolutely. Narrative, narrative purely game. narrative. Yeah. Yes, uh, tell us again, Tom. <laughs> purely a hundred percent narrative. Never mind the fact that that table turned our armies into just murderers. At any rate, so we sat on that table for like four out of our five games. The only time, the only reason we didn't get a five out of five was because two people picked it first because we we came up late in the draw, unfortunately. Um, but at any rate, this year you get like eight tournament points, which is a lot. Okay, for not playing on the same table more than like two games or something. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Which I was like, oh yeah, we did that. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, and the answer, so LOV, great, had, great, great rule change there. Absolutely. Steve. LOV had asked if we're bringing, uh, are bringing filth armies again? Well, the answer is, I mean, I'm bringing my Slanesh, and Tom is bringing Night Haunt. So it balances out, I feel. I mean, like, I don't know that Night Haunt can, should ever be considered filth. That's like, what I'm as saying, people it balances said, out. You're dragging me down. Yes. It's a three game army for most events. Mm -hmm. Now, there may be some really cagey rules interactions that I may or may not be leaning into heavily, but, no. you know. I know. We'll see. Shocking. Yeah. I, for we'll one, find out. Shocked. We'll find out how. Uh, how night haunt goes sure no i'm excited uh it's gonna be great i am i am beyond angry that i literally can't play all five games but that's for another time that has to do with professional life and that's just what happens life gets in the way sometimes how, how many games are you gonna get in i'll get in four i, I have to leave part my mid of the day on sunday oh, to okay. go to the airport. Nice. Then, so so you know for game five i might need a ringer yeah well <laughs> i'm sure steve can step in or something it's fine I think sure. if, if your night on is that deceptive, you can just play down a thousand points. It'll exactly. Be right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. You heard him brag. Yep. That's right. Uh, I didn't. I said that it is a three game army that I'm going to try <laughs> to do well with. Now, what I will say is um, like we won last year, like we took first um, with Vince gone game five. Eh, not looking as good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing night. My Tom's playing Night Haunt too. Nice. nice. All, nice. The, all the Toms. We have a hundred percent Tom to Night Haunt ratio. That's right. I'm playing <laughs> Trek, so that's what I'm trying to get my my blister skin painted. There you go. Nice. Right. Nice. Uh, so no, he is playing Night Haunt, not Legions of Grief. So there you go. No, like it's true uh, Night Haunt. Like oh, Night I think Haunt. Tom's playing Grief actually. Oh no, no, I'm actually playing. You know, the book that came out when Second Edition AOS released. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so for my actual pick of the week, uh, I want to direct everybody to Darren Watson on Twitter, Positive Victim. Uh, he had reached out to me a little while ago and asked if he could commission a Go Trek uh, from me. Uh, now, I don't normally paint dwarves, as everybody would know. In fact, I have painted zero dwarves in my life. Uh, that's not to be, I'm, I'm quite positive, positive I can paint a dwarf. I'm just saying personal aesthetic. Now, as it so happens, uh, we kind of talked for a little while, and I said, well, sure, as long as I can paint it up and use it for Golden Demon, and then I'll donate it to you afterward. So, and he's going to, he wasn't asking me for a personal commission, he's running a uh, year-long, basically, 
challenge of who can do the best with Gotrek. So he'll be looking at tournament armies that have Gotrek in them, and whoever does the best over the next tournament year will will win. And will win this model that Vince is going to compete in Golden Demon with. Correct. That's right. Wow. Yep. And so I have my Gotrek. <coughs> I'll probably start on him this weekend. Uh, he'll take a little while, obviously, because you don't you don't rush models like that. Um, and he's actually going to be part of a. Uh, yeah, he's, he's going to be, he's going to be for Golden Demon, though in an unusual way. That's all I'll say. And, dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. uh, and so I'll, I'll get him all painted. I'm excited. I have lots of good ideas for him. I think he's a fun model. And then a bunch of other people actually jumped on board and are also donating some stuff, uh, as well, uh, to the winner. So that's super cool. Uh, so, uh, it's at positive victim. But I'll link his Twitter down below. Uh, and all of the tournaments that happened between the time when Gotrek was released and a year from Gotrek being released. So basically over the last half or so of 2019 and into 2020, uh, he's going to have... Uh, uh, he'll, he'll be tracking that. And whoever is the true champion of Gotrek is going to win some, some, some loots. Going to win some loots. So that's very exciting. I'm I'm very very happy that he reached out. I think it's a super cool idea, uh, and it should be a really fun thing for the community. And uh, hey, it's gonna gonna see more Go Treks on the table. So why not? When did whoever he come out? Do you remember? Uh, what do both of you said at once? Yes, whoever's the true Slayer, absolutely. Domus, what'd you say? When did he come out? When did he come out? I don't remember. I don't know. What was it like a like a month ago? Maybe is that right? That feels right. I've only been half paying attention for the last month or two. I've been on a break. <laughs> sure, sure. I'm gonna say a month ago. Let's call it that. I don't know exactly, but that sounds about right. Uh, all right, cool. So you guys already kind of touched on your hobby time, but let's officially go into it. So Domus, you're painting up some FEC for a uh, havoc. Is that correct? Yeah, I convert. I just was green stuff in my Vargolf. I found a metal metal Vargolf. Um, but he was missing a leg, so I put a crypt flare leg on him and did some gap filling and added some hair and and yeah, now I'd airbrushed all my wings. Uh, I play Vargeist. Nice. So I'd airbrushed all those like a year ago, and I'm finally getting back to actually painting them. Nice, excellent. Uh, I can't wait to see it, man. That's going to be fantastic. And I'm so glad to hear you're running blister skin. It's always been my favorite since the beginning. I think it was the one that like I called out as actually really loving because I, uh, you know, you know me, I'm a fan of speed kills. And that's, uh, oh, I, love I got this guy to paint too. So. Uh oh, the spooky Nagash head, the horror yeah. guest. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, and I got this guy, so I'm gonna. We're gonna yes, go the great Yeah. Nice. We'll see. I don't, I don't think it'll win any more games, but it'll be crazy fun. Hey, I stand behind the power of Grave Tide. You don't need to sell me on that. I've used that in many armies. Tom, you're still on mute. Uh, I had a Grave Tide in the army that won last year yeah. at Havoc. I like Grave Tide. I think Grave Tide is good because it's so big, and like it does, it does kind of what I want to do. I can't wait to see how you bravery bomb. Uh, I'm excited, Domus. I'm excited for you to like take somebody's poor Iron Jaws from bravery six to zero, and then Crypt and then flares. one brute dies and the entire unit runs away. <laughs> Crypt flares. Sure, absolutely. All right, Tom, you're working on your ghosty boys. Are you on to the black coach? Is this the last? Piece? I am. Um... I am. Um, here's my base that I'm working on. And hold on. Yay. There you go, Vince. So a base that you would truly. Uh, I approve. Yeah. Absolutely. So cue again, up that ET music. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah so I, I wanted something that uh, was just a little bit different. Um, That's and bad. like, I just hate how it like hangs off the base. Um, and so well, this was a it's, solution. It's, yeah. in it's normal for and it's normal it's form. The edge, right? like it's just asinine. Sure. Um, and so this is, uh, yeah. And so it's been fun. It's been like, it's the culmination of the army. So I like, I literally saved this for this army to last, yep. Like I have some chain rafts and stuff like that. Um, but like most of my stuff is all on point for like uh for the blending and all that and it's just it's coming together like i literally broke the open the box today um this morning like i just decided that i was going to take a day off of my other work that i was working on and um 
and just work on this today. Like, so this is all I've done today. <laughs> um, and I got everything assembled and the base put together and ba like base coats or uh, priming, airbrushing. A lot of the glow effect is down. So like uh, I'm making swift progress on this. So hopefully I'll actually get to my sideboard. We'll nice. see. Nice. Sideboard. Uh, Try hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So for me, uh, last week I mentioned that city's army that I was kind of excited about. I pitched this city's army in Tempest Eye, sort of three different groups of stuff. The the Royal Air Force, as it were, with the three yep. steam tanks, the commander in flying, the uh, the free guild, the, the Tempest Eye battalion with a general on Griffin and three units of pistoliers, and a bunch of gyrocopters and gyro bombers, just like a bunch of them, right? right. right. So I kind of it, it bounced around in my head for the next two days, and so. I, I, I had finished up my project that I was working on, that I, the stuff I posted over the weekend. I would finished that last Lanesh stuff. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go get all my bits out, see what I can do. Just let's let's kit bash some stuff. That costs $0. I'll prototype a bunch of stuff and, you know, see what I can get. And so I prototyped out my free guild general on Griffin. I love this thing. And, yeah. Super uh, cool. And my, uh, uh, my steam tank commander... In fact, here, I'll, I'll tell you what. Give me just a second, everybody. I apologize. Come on. Let's see it. All right. So uh, here's the, the free. The general's not on there because he's off. He's behind me. But it's it's I kit bashed him as well. So here's the griffin for my army. This is Whirlwind's Edge. This is my Tempest Eye successor city. I wrote a whole bunch of narrative for it over the weekend. Like, I was really on about this. Like, I got the whole story of how the city works and everything like that. So it's got the big wings. It's the frigate model. It's got claws. Like, I added claws to the frigate and stuff like that. And he stands, the general stands right up top here with his hammer. And I kit bash together a general that's like some Stormcast bits and Space Marine bits and Free Guild bits and everything to just put a guy together. So that's my general on Griffin. And uh, then I made my steam tank commander. He's all black. I apologize because I had only primed him. But this is, uh, there's the, he's, uh, it's flying. And obviously he sits on top of a building and floats up there. He's got his nice big cannon, little machine gun on the front, dude popping out of the top. This is made out of the, uh, what is it? The, um, it's like one of the stacks from the Sector Mechanicus stuff. Yep. Uh, yep. The Alchemite stack. Yeah. The, Part uh, of the Alchemite. Ar yeah. The Alchemite stacks or whatever. So it's what I, know it's what I made my movement arc out of. Yes. Yeah. So I gave him like the frigate wings and the, the stuff on the side there. You can see that kind of thing and some little pipes and all those sorts of things. And then I like your gyrocopter conversion. Yes. And he's done actually. He's finished. I finished him up tonight. So, and this is the gyrocopter. I'll post some pictures up of him. Uh, the gyrocopter is like the knight Helvrin uh, <laughs> body with a machine gun on top. He's my, he's my happy little buzzy bee uh, yep. with a little hovering thing. He's got like some, the struts and the little things. And he's got a little sail on the back and uh, yeah. And so they're going to be over like ruins. It's like a way, it's sort of a, a blasted city terrain. This, I realized I was so excited about this army because it lets me do all my like scale modeling stuff. I like, like all this different freehand and decals and things like that as, and weathering and battle damage and just do a bunch of cool vehicles and everything is going to be kit bashed. I, I know what my pistoliers are. Um, I don't have them around, but I, I, I got them as well. Uh, so I'm just super excited about this army. The other steam tanks will be off the same body, but they won't be flying. So, yeah. And there you go. It's going to be at all, all like, mechanical force. Um, and, uh, yeah, so there's there's the gyrocopter. I'll show it again there. I'm really happy with how he came out as far as, like, his design and the look. And I got my color scheme all together. It's going to be the white with the crimson. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, with a little bit of blue as an accent color here and there. And, yeah, so there you go. And now I need a bunch of... So if uh, if anybody out there has uh, extra, like, struts, the struts that are on the frigate. So, like, you, normally when you have your frigates, the, the uh, KO frigates, they have these struts that hold up the endrins. Mm -hmm. If anybody has any extra struts, I know it's a weird piece, or if you have any extra of the, like, fins the like rudders the various rudders or fins uh reach out to me uh i would love 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 to um 
to, to get those from you <laughs> because that's the only part that I don't have, didn't have enough of everything else. I can, I can build this art. Like I'm so excited because I can also build this army for like almost no dollars. It's just gonna It's going to be a very cheap army, uh, which I love. And I've been wanting to convert an army for a while. Like I had done several stock armies and I was like, you know, I'd really love to do like a whole army that's conversions. So then why not go all the way and just like kit bash, convert everything like to an insane level. So uh, yeah, but that's all I need. I need some extra struts and some extra frigate fins. Like, I guess I can go buy another frigate if I absolutely have to, but I'm kind of trying to avoid that. Nobody sells just the frigate bits in the U.S. There are, like, frigate bits you can get internationally, but then it's... Like, um, I, I looked on do, eBay at least. Does Bits World not sell them anymore? Nope. Nope. Didn't have them. Okay. Because I, I <laughs> used to... Uh, like, I bought my extra stuff that I made my Luminarch out of. From, it, like and I use frigate bits and I got it from Bits World. It was my first stop, but okay. yeah. Uh, so if anybody's got a lead on any of those, reach out to me. I would be deeply appreciative. So, okay. Anyway, so that's hobby time. All right, gentlemen. Uh, you'll see. I'll post up pictures of that finished gyro dude this weekend and uh, and everything else. But I, I love him. He's got little like I was able to use some fun decals. I know. I know. I said we'll get into the normal thing, but I do want to show this real quick. Where's it at? Here it is. I bought this fun set of decals that are just like, like it has like the, like the side of bomber stuff where it has like, you know, the girls writing yep. bombs and like angry eyes and it has like the Mad Max symbols and stuff like that. Oh, that's it's, awesome. Yeah. It's got like melty numbers and danger. It's like little anarchy symbols and, and like little words that are like insanity and stuff like that. It's just little grim reapers. Yeah. So I want to use those throughout the army. Just fun stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so that was a cool, nice. that was a cool, like, uh, decal purchase. Uh, okay. Gentlemen, are you ready to talk about some, some Auric War Clans? Are you ready to unleash the WAH? WAH! There you go. I mean, Good. if we need to. Tom, smack him. That's right. That's right, Tom. Look, this, that's... Do you want to get booted from the force? That's a good way to get smashed and or bashed, Tom, right there. Is that kind of attitude? We're it's only... Gonna be He's going to make me mad as hell. That's right. Hey, Crumping I'll say only that around here. My son loves the book. <laughs> and, I feel like that's it good. Is, <laughs> and, and it is a good book. Like, that's my 10,000 foot uh, overview of the book. It's a good book. All right. So, here's what I want to know Domus, let's start here where we normally do. We'll get into the deets in a minute. But, Domus, as an Iron Jaws player like myself, who also has a passing... You have a more passing interest, perhaps, than the rest of the Bone Slayers, but we're both primarily Iron Jaws people. What do you think of the book overall? Did this book excite you? What's your high level? Uh, I love it. I lo absolutely love it. It very much excites me. Um, the the only drawback for me is that it makes me want to paint more models for my Iron Jaws. Which <laughs> <laughs> I, I went real technical on my Iron Jaws scheme, and I don't want to paint more Iron Jaws models, and I'm like, Arr! I do! No, I love it. I, I think it's fun. I think it's good. Uh, and I think there's a lot of options. Agreed completely. Tom, what about yourself? Yeah. Um, I mean, bone splitters don't interest me at all. Like at all. And it, that's not a judgment on the book. That's just them as an army. And yet, um, there's just so much in this book that draws me to it. Like all of it. Like not just bone splitters, but the iron jaws for uh, the big wall, the great wall, all of it. So it's good. Yeah. Here's what I'll say. I think here's, here's my strong statement. You ready? This is the best book that's been published in AOS too. I don't mean best as far as like powerful or like most competitive or something like that. It's the best book as far as making the best use of the resources that it has to make the most compelling set of armies with interesting decisions at every point and armies with a limited number of figures that still play in a lot of different and interesting ways, but while still retaining overall a fair amount of simplicity and ease of access for new players. This hit the bullseye. And I'll give a couple examples as we go into things, but like I've built many armies with this. You can go watch uh, doom and Darkness's show shout out. I was on doom and Darkness's uh, channel doing a uh doing a sort of unlocking where i did three lists and uh, i'll link that down in the description as well and uh i found sometimes i used iron jaws 
Sometimes I used one of the War Clans. They are both compelling. It just depends on what you want to do. It's amazing. Most books, it's like, well, you know, I'm going to go ahead and take the Enclaves or the whatever, you know, like you're not, you're not really paying any price to do it. Um... Or like, or what you're sacrificing is is like you're clearly upgrading by taking this thing. Not the case mm-hmm. here. It's such a good set of decisions you have to make, especially in the Iron Jaws section of the book. And at the same time, it gave you a new way to run your Iron Jaws, your Bone Splitters, both together in the Big Wah. Such a beautiful combination. You can take mm-hmm. even a pure Iron Jaws or pure Bone Splitters army, and they can function in uh, Big Wah and in a completely different, interesting way. Like, this gives you so many different and interesting ways to play with your toys. It's amazing. I love this book. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, this is just an A-plus for me. Um, And obviously, I start as a big fan of the army. But, you know, that meant at the same time I had a lot of expectations. It would have been easy to screw up, right? Which is kind of what it is. Like, when you have that... When you have that, when it's an army you really love, you bring a big set of expectations, and this yep. this hit on all cylinders. Every page, mm-hmm. I was like, "Yep, I like that. I like that. I like that." And I just wanted, I just started making lists. I couldn't help myself. It was just so much fun. So, all right. So let's get into the book on the detail. Uh, we'll talk. We're, we're not. We're not going to go blow by blow here, but I'll, I'll lay down some basics. We're going to start with the IJ. Mm-hmm. And I will lay out just the basic stuff about Iron Jaws, how they work. Obviously, you have the War Clans. Talk about them in a minute. Still have plus one to all your charge rolls. Still have smashing and bashing, which is fantastic, where if you if you kill a unit in combat or blow it up, uh, you get to then fight again immediately. Incredibly powerful. I've said for a long time, I think Iron Jaws are actually a very good match for Slanesh. You represent a bunch of big depravity uh, balloons for them. But you also can make yourself... It's very hard for them to stop you with their Locus. Yep. Because especially now, this army is so deadly. Dear God, does this army put out damage. And like we'll talk about it as we get into it. But uh, the but the the nature of this, this book is that like... If, or of Smashing and Bashing is that if you have one unit that they fail to Locus, which by the way is quite common, right? Uh, you, you're going to bust your whole army out of prison. Because you're going to fight with one and just fight down the line. Because nothing in that army can take a hit. Um, so I love that. They have, they still have Mighty Destroyers. It's still just as good as it was. Where you can spend a command point to either move if you're more than 12 inches. Charge if you're within 12 inches. Or fight if you're within 3 inches. So yes, you can fight in the hero phase. Amazing. No longer can you stack the wall. Now the wall is a once a game thing. Where it's always plus 1 attack. And if you somehow have 12 units... <laughs> then you can get uh, plus two attacks. So there you go. Um, and then, of course, the new rule we got is mad as hell, where if you take, if one of your Iron Jaws units take da- takes damage and they're more than nine inches away from enemy units, that unit can move a D6 inches. So if they get... To be clear, like on that, the big wall, that, wall though, uh-huh. like you can roll into it still. Like it's just a 12, it's not 12 units. It's, that's true. it's the total. You'd have to have... Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's 12 or more. You're absolutely right. If you had six units in range, all within range, wholly within 18 your general, and you rolled the six, yes, you'd get the plus two attacks. Absolutely correct. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I was being too quick with my wording. And you're going to have multiple heroes, so like getting that many units within 18 is not impossible. Yes. Yes. It's it's <laughs> it's not impossible, but it's probably not likely on the turn you're actually going to use it, which is like not turn in most cases. <laughs> Plus one attack with the war channers is so good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely agreed. Like, it's fine for what it is. Honestly, it's now the least interesting command ability, and and that's another level set we should do. Is which, that- which it really always was, if you think about it. Yeah. I mean, it was cool when we got stacking watt at first, but at least for me, that kind of evaporated pretty quickly. The cool, fun aspect of that. Yes, I I agree. It's a, it was a, it was a one trick pony kind of a one note thing before. Yep. Now, so many so many notes. It's a, it's a it's a veritable orchestra of notes. And well, anything that you spam gets boring very quickly. Sure, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it just was it was skewed. Uh, but the reality is now there's so many different interesting things, and that's where that leads. Iron Jaws are very CP hungry, like super CP hungry. Fortunately, there are some ways to mitigate that, which I'm sure we'll talk about. So that's the basic stuff, okay? So <clears throat> before we get into the specific like command traits, artifacts, those kinds of things, 
I want to talk about the the actual war clans. So the Iron Sons, the Blood Tooths, and the new ones, the Chapas. Uh, so Domus, what do you, what do you like out of the, out of the war clans? Which I think all are good, by the way. I actually like them all, uh, and for different reasons. Uh, it depends on what I want the army to do. Yep. Um, because the Iron Sun, I mean, the counter charge out of the Iron Sons is just amazing. Mm. Um, yep. I absolutely love it, but. That, you know, then I really like Mighty Destroyers. So it's like, so now I'm fighting command points. Right. Um, Blood Tooths is awesome because I can leave the Weird Knob at home and I get the auto hand of Gork. Yep. Uh, you know, and to me, the move is not turn one. The, the, that move is a turn three move yep. and you can all of a sudden reposition and go get an objective. You couldn't get to something along those lines. 100% agreed. Yep. Um, and then anything that makes your war channers better is is absolutely amazing so the chapas and uh, you know again you're getting more value out of your war channers but again it's the command point trade-off agreed so i do like all three but it's it's about what you want to do and i would tell you most of my list lean towards um iron suns just because of the minus one to hit you know when you do fight a shooty army that's a big deal uh and i was always an iron suns player back when it was the mega battalion Mm -hmm. so it was Same. it's always kind of been home for me for that reason and now having it be automatic is amazing yep yeah agreed like iron suns is placed great to like both a defensive iron jaws army and an alpha iron jaws army ironically um because you have like the defensive elements are things like the subtract one from hit rolls right and yep. the the sun bless armor you have old school school ironclad on uh, a mega boss, right where you can be, he reduces rend by one to a minimum of nothing. You do get an additional command point, and you have the all right get him where you can charge them when they charge you, right? Like at the end of their uh, charge phase, you get to pick a unit and charge. Such a better version of the old command trait thing where it was like on a five plus yeah. you got to charge five. randomly. Yep, that charge thing is so powerful. So like <laughs> you think of something like think. Let's go back to the Slanesh example, right? And think about how these turns work. They do their turn. At the end of their charge phase is when they activate all their locuses, right? It's their mm -hmm. turn. Their end of charge phase stuff happens first, right? Yep. And then yep. your end of charge phase happens, and you're like, oh, good. Well, I kept this giant unit of six pigs back here, and, uh, and they're coming in now. They're coming in hot, right? And they're going to then mortal wound you. Not only are they getting in unlocust, but now they're going to mortal wound you too when they come in and smash, right? Yeah, good. So, uh, it's, it's just, it's potent and it's, it's great for things like, uh, Iron Suns in my mind combines really well with like a, um, a piggy list, right? So like a, 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 a list that's really focusing heavily on like the gore fist where yep. you just put your entire army into them top of one. Right. Mm. And mm. cause you just, you, everybody will be there. You'll have. 18 to 20 some pigs into them at the top of one plus a mega boss or what, you know, all fighting with bonus damage, all yeah. fighting with neg one to be hit and return. It's a nightmare. Like you're just going to literally smash and bash them right there. It's a great alpha strike. Uh, if they're not chaffed properly, that's a, uh, that's a good game. Well, even, that's a GG. Even if they are chaffed, even if they are chaffed properly, like it's going to be painful for them. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, blood tooths is awesome. I agree because it does let you get like, they, they have a absolutely garbage command trait right now. It's not even worth reading. It might just be the Ipsum Lorem test text. Cause you don't get like, you don't get a realm gate anymore. It's just like, if there happens to be one around, but fine. Okay. That being said, I think their command ability is super strong. The break through the oh line God. that lets you consolidate. Yeah, like, it's so good. It's crazy. Because uh, like what it is, is if you fought, you can, with a unit at the end of the combat phase, you can use this to move away. Right. Or not, 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 I'm sorry, not move away. You can use it to, like, if you've eliminated their unit, to move. At the like end of combat. Some, at the end of combat. So if, like, a unit fights itself out of combat, you can use this to, like, move on to an objective or move to block another unit or, like, it, the tactical use of this is just so fascinating. And Mad as Hell is going to let you do that too, because Iron Jaws yep. take dam They always take damage, right? Yeah, uh, they yep. dish it out, but they always take hits. So if you wipe the unit out, you're going to get that Mad as Hell move as well. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just answering your question. Yeah, it's not. No, the locust doesn't. The the lo he said there, there was a person who asked in the comments like, 
Doesn't the locust happen first or that the player whose turn it was chose the order? No. That's not how it works. For start and end of things, if it's your turn, you go, you take your start stuff first. If it's their turn, they have their start stuff first. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's, like, I think that's really powerful. And obviously, Blood Tooths also have the army-wide plus one to run and charge, which is, again, like, now you're up mm -hmm. to plus two to charge across the army. Insane. Insane with that free teleportation. Because even without anything else, you're on sevens now. Yeah. Right? I mean... Pass the sevens. I'll take it. Sure. Fives if you're Ard Boys. Like, I mean, just just bonkers good. And then, yeah, Dachapas with their ability to, to in a lot of battle plans, reroll charges just universally on half the board without command points. <laughs> And to have one War Chanta give plus one damage to three units of Brutes and Ard Boys. So like, good. That's your whole army is now plus one damage, basically, right? I mean, that's that's every hammer you've got. I mean, if, one guy. if you're rocking the Brute Fist, there's a real good argument for taking to yeah. Chapels. Yeah, absolutely agreed. Um, I I think the Ard Fist, it can do the same thing, 100%. Yeah. Yep, yep, absolutely. Uh, so I think all three of them are good and compelling. But mm -hmm. what's so cool about this is that at the same time, I've built, uh, I have built many lists that are just Iron Jaws. And honestly, and you mentioned it, like the, the, let's talk about how we handle the command point problem. That's going to come up because I think my favorite builds in Iron Jaws don't take one of the war clans, like just personal taste. Sure. Um, so what do you like out of the out of the command traits? So you have a section of command traits for, for mega bosses and a section for weird knobs. And that's relevant because the Choppas often have a weird knob leader. That's kind of also their thing. So what do you like? I mean I know where I know where my heart is. Uh that's for sure. On the Iron Jaws command traits. Um, I like a, quite a few of them, but but the free mighty destroyers yes. have with the heartstrings quite a yes. lot. Yeah. Yeah. Brutish yeah. cunning. Oh it's my god. <laughs> so, Brutish Cunning. Once per battle round, the general can use the Mighty Destroyer's command ability without spending a command point. So that is the ability to, as I said, move or charge or fight. Meaning yep. the Mega Boss, if he's got this, like the Mega Boss on Maw Crusher, who has this on himself, right? If he's the general and he's just got this, which he's going to be your general, he can just fight in the hero phase all the time for free. Like that's just, he just uses this on himself all the time. So he always... Uh, he always fights in in all of your uh your hero phases. Amazing. Yep. Or you can do the the mega boss teleport trick. Yes. Hand a Gorkim outside of twelve mighty destroyers. Oh look, I'm just outside of three now. Hey and you can set up some very interesting destructive bulk runs that way. Yep. Yep. Mm. It's it's so freaking good. But yeah, there are some other ones that are also compelling. Like, I think Ironclad is obviously a pretty classic one if you're going for the hardcore defense. right? Yep. So that's just plus one to save for everything that targets the general. And uh, I think that, like, the next tier down below that is, like, Live to Fight and the Muscle Brown Brute, where on a two-up you do a D3 Mortal Wounds. can be interesting to combine with, like, um, uh, with your your Destructive Bulk or on the charge you reroll Wounds. Not bad. Like, wounding has always been the problem. I know that's always where my dice would kill me, right? Because you, you're very often going to be on twos to hit in this army, but those threes to wound are going to are gonna hurt you. Yep. Uh, so, yes. But, like, brutish cunning. Oh, oh, good night. Right? It's so good. <laughs> Hello. All right. And then in the, you know, in the weird knob stuff for the choppas, I think you have good options there, too, if you take a general that's a weird knob, because you got, like, the plus D3 command points, which is always amazing. You've got the Master of the Weird, which is just plus one to cast a spell and unbind. You know, great. Cool. All good. Yeah, stuff. I combined that with the with the trinket to get plus two to cast on a wizard in my uh in my goofy list that was all about the Wrath of Gork. Yes. Oh, which we will talk about because the Wrath of Gork is fun. Uh in the magic items, I think the one we need to draw attention to is obviously the reframed destroyer. Yeah. Where once per game at the start of combat, basically you can say, I'm going to turn on the destroyer and you add three to the damage of all your attacks for that round. That's a lot. That's a lot of damage. Uh, it's not a small amount of damage. It's a lot of damage, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like... What do you mean four? Really? I mean, well, come on. Well, yeah, because 
You're also going to get hit by a war chanter. Uh, I can't. Yeah, the very realistic scenario. I actually love the destroyer on the foot mega boss. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I like to give him a few rounds of getting stuck in. We'll talk about strength from victory in a moment. <laughs> but uh and why it's the most amazing ability ever. Um, but you get him stuck in for a little while, so he gets up to eight or nine attacks. Then you pop destroyer and you give him a war chanter buff. And let's say he's making eight attacks, probably hitting on twos because of his own command ability. Wounding on threes, Renneg one six damage. Yep. yep. You're a terrible person. Take that, you stupid Wargroth beetle. <laughs> you know what else isn't bad on that fellow, turns out? Sword of Judgment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. Change the victory him up a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not Oops. not so shabby. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. So destroyer is awesome. Uh, and then, like, you've got little trinkets for your shamans, which, as you mentioned, like, there's one that gives you plus one to casting, which I think is the one you're going to take. <laughs> to be but I, I also like the Golden Tooth, um, not taking Battle Shock. Like, I love Brutes. I love to play Brutes. Mm -hmm. So not taking Battle Shock for Brutes is a big freaking deal. Mm -hmm. And just totally removing that aspect. Yeah, I think the value of the battle shock immunity is very dependent on how many brutes you've got. Right. Cause like yep. with Ard boys, they've got the built in bravery bonus plus the numbers. They have to worry about it generally less cause they're tough enough. Absolutely. Yeah. The I mean, pigs, you've got to, they're, 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 you know, brave seven. You don't generally lose that many pigs where you're going to trigger it in any real risk, but brutes, I agree. Yep. I was always the, the unit champ of my brutes as my general for that auto inspiring presence. Sure. Sure. I, you know, I was that guy. You were that guy. <laughs> Tom, we played when I was that guy. We did. We did. <laughs> uh, we've also got some mount traits. Uh, to me, this list says five really good, compelling things that in most armies would be actually a, a decent take. And Weirden, the one you're going to take. <laughs> because Weirden is four up spell ignore. Uh, so your mega boss can on a four plus just dodge any spell or spell effect. Meaning like yep. half move, no, I don't want that. Neg one to hit, I want that. Get these gaminids out of here. Right? Like I don't want any of this stuff. Four plus. No thank you. I like the oh, move. No, thank you. I it's very weird and it's very, very good. But I really like the move. That yeah. that pie plate is a nightmare in a lot of scenarios. Yes. <laughs> uh huh. And, and yeah, anytime exactly. you're trying to go over anything, man, that two in extra two inches can make a hell of a lot of difference. Yeah. It's absolutely true. And the reality like, is wow. his movement is still the thing that suffers the most as he takes damage. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um because like he's the what's awesome about the mega boss on Maw Crusher now is that like he doesn't get that much less killy anymore as he gets wounded. I mean he's mm -hmm. like in fact, I would argue throughout the course of the game he will get much, much scarier. Absolutely. Uh, he, just, he just can't get there. Right, but his movement does fall in the toilet. So there's, that's a good, it's a completely good case. It um, is. I think it's a great trade-off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the War Chanta got new war beats. Basically, it's it's War Chanta prayers. Feel the rhythm. Uh, he's He is back, in fact, with another one of those block rocking beats. Uh, these all go on a four up. They're quite good. Uh, one of them gives you uh, plus one to hit. 3d6. <laughs> really good. One of them <laughs> gives you a 3d6 charge, which is amazing. Uh, by the way, you're not going to charge something. Like, it lets you charge things 18 inches away. Neat. That's not actually what I'm using it for. I'm using it to make 11 and 12 inch charges like they're going out of style. Absolutely. Uh, you are not safe at a foot away from my army anymore. So there you go. And fix and beat, which lets you heal a D3 wounds. Okay, cool. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Need enough. No, we're not taking that. No, no. Although I will say, most lists I've written have three war channels in them. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm at about two on average. But yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong taking a war channel. Right. Uh, right. Because the war chant is base bonus. So it used to be, as we all remember, the, war, the way the war chanter used to work was he would he would he would drop the beat and uh and you would get uh, and a unit would get plus one to hit for that combat right not not to the next hero phase no just that 
combat. Now instead, what happens is they drop the beat and a unit gets plus one damage until the next hero phase. Whoa, <laughs> Nelly! Now it doesn't stack, obviously. You can't be affected by more than one of these block rock and beats in a turn. But I'm okay with that. Sure, absolutely. Totally fair. But like taking a unit of Ard Boys from threes, threes, neg one, one damage to threes, threes, neg one, two damage. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a considerable change in efficacy. <laughs> right? Brutes yeah. go brutes go psycho, pigs go psycho, your mega boss goes off. This like, is simply one of the greatest buffs in the history of buffs. Like, I like it better on Ard Boys. Just because of bodies, like I know it sounds silly, but oh sure, like I just like it turns into machines. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, with the smaller bases and the bodies. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's so good. It's beautiful. I've written many lists, by the way, that I couldn't fit a spellcaster in, and I was perfectly okay with that. I was like, nah, don't need one of those. Like Handagork's cool, but I'll just more, more, more mighty destroyers. That's basically a teleport. Right. It's fine enough for me. Uh, let's talk about spells, because I know... The, I, I'm excited about these. Classically, we still have our teleport, which, yay, great. That's that's the great big green hand of Gork. But, uh, Domus, you mentioned you had a wacky list around this. Would you? How, how about you take us through Wrath of Gork, which is a so, very uh, funny spell. It is. It casts on an 8, and only has a 16-inch range. Um, yeah. But you roll two dice for each friendly Iron Jaw unit with two or more models within 16 inches of the caster. For each two plus, you can inflict one mortal wound on the enemy. So I wrote um, a double Ardfist list that had like 11 or 12 units. Mm -hmm. um, basic, and then the, the, the wizard was plus two to cast with the trait and the artifact. Mm -hmm. If you get lucky with arcane, you could get the plus three. Um, and then basically you're just like, okay, if you come close, I'm gonna hit you with 22 mortal wounds. Did, did bring the keeper? Did, come on. Did you put? Did you put uh, a Bailwind in there? I didn't, but I, but when I as soon as I posted it, the whole chat was like Bailwind, Bailwind, right. Bailwind. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Yep. It's yeah, I, bonkers. There's a lot of things you could do just with that as a core. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't think it's gonna win tournaments, but I, I think it's got some juice it's and it'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. I mean, anything gets close, you zap it. It still has war channers, so you're not defenseless. No. I mean, the it, ability to pop out very, very reasonably somewhere between 16 and 20 mortal wounds without stretching too hard, that's a lot of wounds. Like, when you can just point at somebody who doesn't have mortal wound protection, like even a character on a bang. monster, and just go and melt them like they're, like they're Linda Hamilton in Terminator 2 in the dream sequence. Like, what? that's... That's a scary ability. Well, then you get to play the Ardfist recycle game, too. Five gets you ten. Mm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that. We talk battalions, 100%. So, yeah, some good some good spell stuff there. Uh, let's talk about some battalions, and let's talk about some units, things like that, in the Iron Jaws. So we've got all our classic sort of unit battalions are back. Ardfist, Brute Fist, Gore Fist, Iron Fist, Weird Fist. All back. Uh, and it, to, in my mind, Iron Fist is still the king of the ring. Uh, Iron Fist is three to five units of any of your normal battle line stuff. So Ard Boys, Gore Grunters, or Brutes in any combination. As usual, you pick one of the champions, they gain two wounds. And then once in each of your hero phases, the big boss from this battalion can use the Mighty Destroyer's command abilities as if it were a mega boss and without spending one command point. Can, can we and, talk about... Now we're doing it twice for free every round. And he can use it on anybody. And he can use it on anybody. There's no restrictions. That's right. Can we talk about how all the other books recently have gotten screwed on battalions? And they're like, yeah, just use your collection. It's fine. <laughs> just like, like, yeah, for this battalion, three to five of any of those units you want to play. That's that's fine. Well, Iron Jaws have always had good battalions, man. I don't know what to I, tell you. Well, I know. So this has, so this has good battalions. It's true. Sure. Yeah, like which does Slanesh? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. But I'm thinking about like uh, Cities of Sigmar. I'm thinking about the Stormcast book. I'm thinking about the Fire Slayer book. Like all yeah. of them had just like just lackluster representation in the battalion section at, for like diversity and 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 like flexibility and stuff like that. It's, it's the swingiest element. Yeah, go ahead, Domus. I'm sorry. 
Orcs is the best. Orcs is the best. Yeah, clearly. clearly. So... I love the Iron Fist because it can handle all your units. It puts all your units into one battalion, basically, because it's pretty. It's yeah. very rare I actually write more than five uh, units after the heroes. Like most of the time, I'm fitting my army into five units, five non-hero units, and it's giving you two free Mighty Destroyers, which is the thing I always wanted to be doing, anyways. Freeing up the rest of my command points to go to stuff like the plus one to hit is now the command ability of the uh, of the Mega Boss. So yep. he has go on, lads, get stuck in, which gives plus one to hit. Uh, so I want to be using it on that or the wall once a game uh, or, you know, whatever, right? So yeah, I, I like I like all of them. Uh, I, I'm not in love with Weird Fist. I've written lists with all the other four. Yeah. Um, just just because I've, you know, the, the shaman was a bit of a casualty, but it's, you know, there's still reason to take him. Mm hmm. I, I lament the foot. Indeed, indeed. But, you know, there's hope. The you teleport's good. The teleport's good. But yeah, I agree. The Ard, the Ard Fist is obviously the Ard Boy Battalion. It is funny because they can now be taken in fives. And when you roll the four up to get an Ard Boy unit back when it's destroyed... The it, command ability, though, you have to spend a command point, too. This is mm -hmm. true. You do have to spend a command point and then roll a four up. And when it happens, you get a new unit of ten. <laughs> on, the, on the board edge. On the board but edge. Still. Oh, very good. <laughs> nice upgrade. The Brute yeah. Fist is obviously the one for all Brutes. That turns all your Brutes into, like, the impact. They all do impact hits. We're on a four-up. They mortal wound when they hit people, which yep. is cool, as well as giving the plus two wounds to the champ. And the Gore Fist is your free move for your pigs, but they don't get, like, the super move anymore. They just move their moves. They go nine out, which is, yep. frankly, all you need, by the by. So, like, it, more than enough. It's more enough. than enough. Yeah. Being able to scoot nine is amazing before the game starts. I mean, we're going to talk about that when we get to Bone Splitters and how they have one of the most amazing Allegiance abilities in the history of Allegiance abilities, and that lets them move five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's I read that, and I was like, oh, my God, that's powerful. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, all, like, they're all good. No more one dropy drop anymore. Most of the armies I've written, Domus, where are your armies fallen? Mine have come down, like, mo usually four to six. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, in that range, sometimes more depending. You know, I, I've also gone battalion free. Um, and I think there's arguments for that, too, depending, again, on what you want to do. Uh, the allies chart is pretty rich nowadays. Yep. Yep. Um, I like a lot of the allies, you know, bringing in the gets, bringing in the bone splitters. Um, so I. I I've I've gone down that road, but primarily four to six is a good average for me. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people utilize the talk about utilizing like the fungoid cave shaman because he can you know he's obviously one of your allies. He's a decent spellcaster himself, and he has the um. He's just a command point dude. Yeah, and he can generate more command points exactly. So well, he can also okay. get a cauldron, and the cauldron lets you do things. Yeah, yeah but then again, that's like the cauldron will give him itchy nuisance, right? Right, which is potent. But it's like more points, more points. It's a question of how much do you want to erode out of your iron jaws, right? And, and you can still you can still teleport with that as well, can't you? Uh, no, because the hand is the hand is on an orc unit, I believe. No, but the no 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 no. You're talking about uh, the cauldron, the regular green hand. The yeah, the regular green hand out of gets. Oh yes, yeah, so could use that spell to teleport himself. Yeah, that's what I'm saying like, well, no, not himself. Like, I think it's any unit, like any, any unit in your army. No, um, it, it's a gets. I think I'm pretty sure it's a gets unit. Yeah, it might be a gloom spike gets unit. I don't have the book. Handy, I can check it real quick. It I have sure. it on my phone. I uh, I looked at it and I'm like 90 percent sure because I just looked at it when I was writing this silly list. I think, by the way, you can build a one-drop Mega Battalion. They have the Brawl, which is one Mega Boss, one War Chanter, one Oryx Shaman, and then three to five Brute Fists, Gore Fists, or Ard Fists. I think this actually is possible to fit in 2K. <laughs> really? I haven't... I don't you think I've tried that I just kind of... To, yeah, you have to build it in the way as possible. Everything min and with and with five-unit five Ard Boy units... <laughs> <laughs> like just to fill up two ard fists, I I'm pretty sure it just fits, but it's a Moon, terrible army. Like it's Moonland hand is gets only. Yeah, yeah, it is gets only. Yeah, I yeah. just checked it. But he can teleport himself. 
Yeah, but itchy, but itchy nuisance still works, which is yes, uh, which is the reason to dig into that lore. And and honestly, I was going down that route because of the big wah. Your camera turned, right. by the way, somewhat domus. Oh, the in the big wah, you can use the the plus to cast ability on any friendly wizard. It doesn't have to be an orc. Yep. So you could you could dig into this combo to get a boosted spell out of a goblin or even the troll hag if you were yep you know, that desperate. So let's talk about some of the units in Iron Jaws quickly here. Uh, we've mentioned some of them in passing, but I want to I dig in on, on some elements. Um, so let's talk about that Mega Boss and the Mega Boss on Mark yeah. Russia. I mentioned the command ability. It's real good. It's just plus one to hit. It's fantastic. Go on, lads. Get stuck in. Yep. Um, Gordrak is actually worth it now, I think, in some cases, especially in the big wall. Like, I actually have written some lists of the Gordrak I'm pretty excited about. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's interesting. The um, but the mega boss on Maw Crusher. So here's my opinion, and Domus, I'll, I'll have you check me on this one. My answer with the mega boss is if you put an offensive thing on him, you've made a wrong choice in most cases for the mega boss on Maw Crusher. He, he needs to be clad in defensive stuff, and the two builds I like are either British Cunning, the Ethereal Amulet, and Weirden. So he's on a Ethereal, basically three up save. And four up spell ignore, right? But then he can, well, he can mighty uh, destroyers for free. Does he get the plus one to save from the command trait if he's No, I have Ethereal. He's Brutish Cunning. I'm not giving him the plus one to save. Brutish okay. Cunning's the command trait. Ethereal yep. is the the uh, the uh, magic item, and Weirden oh. is the mount trait. But the trait gives plus one to save, doesn't it? No. no Weirden four up spell ignore. Oh, okay. Yes. That's yes. what it is. Never mind. Correct. Sorry. You're fine. That gives you a three up on rendable and a four plus spell ignore. I call that the moderate defense option, right? And the problem is like you can still get depending on it's great against shooting like neg two rend shooting. You still stay on threes. You can give yourself reroll once to save easy enough through like either a command point or through any of other things, you know, a mystic shield or whatever. And I think that makes for a pretty hard mega boss. Okay. But the other option, if you think you're going to face a lot more mortal wounds than shooting, is you go Ironclad, which is the plus one to save, so now he's running around on a two-up. You go Ignax's Scales for the four-up four, of four up mortal wound ignore, and Weirden for the four-up spell ignore. So yeah. if you fail the spell ignore, you still have the mortal wound protection to ignore 50% of the damage that's dealt. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, really making this guy tough. And the reason it works is because, one, this dude is a straight murderer now. When they combined his profiles. He, and he's always been a target. Yes. But, but now he's got an even bigger target on his back. Yes. And he puts out so much damage. Like when this guy starts, it's quite reasonable that he'll have between 14 and 16 attacks that hit on twos, wound on threes at either neg one or two rend doing two or three damage. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of attacks. Yep. And a lot of damage. Like he will splinter units. Um, and then he has strength from victory, which is amazing because at the end of a combat phase, if any enemy models were slain by wounds inflicted by this model's attacks in that phase, add one to this model's wound characteristic and add one to the attacks characteristic of your boss Choppa and Rift Tube Fist or Gorehaka Choppa. Woof. So as the game goes on, like you can potentially add 10 attacks to him over the course of the game if he and fights every round. If you fight and you keep gaining wounds, basically. Yep. So you're still down for the damage table, but but you're you know you're still on the table. Yes, absolutely. Like he he um, you, you could be like okay, at a point where you're like, well, how many wounds have you taken? Ten. How many wounds do you have left? Thirteen. <laughs> 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 right? Like, that's that's not an unreasonable thing. But yes, it's an important yeah. note that because AOS is wounds suffered, not like 40k where it's wounds remaining, yep. you're still operating. Like, even if you've got 13 wounds remaining, yep. right, you're still operating on the 7 to 10 wounds suffered if you took 10 wounds. Absolutely. Right? So you do need to account for that. No, uh, I, I love this ability. I, I love the change to it because it was so... It was situational. You never really got it. Yeah. I mean, it was so mm -hmm. random. You had to kill a hero with the weapon. Right. Uh, you know, it just. Uh... Yes. Uh, so this guy is just liquid hot magma now. He's amazing. He's, he's yeah, on the, fire. 
the destructive bulk took a little bit of a hit, but you can bounce that back with the with the trade if you want. Right. Um, because it's on a five now instead of a four. But the shooting attack, uh, mm -hmm. that was a big deal change for me because I, I don't know about you, but I used to fluff that wound roll on that shooting attack. Oh, all the time. Basis. One attack, hit on two, wound on three. Yeah, and I never did anything. anything. <laughs> no. so, Might as well have said ignore this line. Yes, yeah. correct. Uh, say like you fluff the hit, or you fluff the wound, or they'd make yep. their save. And if all that somehow magically worked on this one roll, you'd roll the one to damage. <laughs> like every time, <laughs> every time. Uh, we had a request from the chat to talk about the Wrath of Gorks secondary benefit when combined with the Shamanic Skull Cape. So the spell steal. Uh, sure. I mean, I think you just trotted it out right there. The yeah. the Shamanic Skull Cape, if you kill an enemy wizard, you get to steal their spell. And being yeah. able to blast out a Kira laser. You got to do it with <laughs> melee. You got to do it with melee weapons to oh, do that. Yeah. You have to, no. the wizard has to kill the enemy wizard with a melee weapon. Otherwise, it would be absolutely beautiful. Nice. I hadn't but, looked at it, but there you go. Yeah, if you blast them with a the spell, you're not. Oh, I looked. <laughs> When I wrote that list, but yeah, you got to kill that guy yeah. with a melee weapon. I mean, oh, yeah, you're right. Yep. It's nice. probably not going to happen. Agreed. Uh, yeah, I mean, any other units that you really love the changes to? I mean, obviously, Pigs got better. Brutes got a little... They, they got, like... They're still good. They think they got a little, like, technically worse, but better overall because now they're 140. So, like, actual value, in my mind, increased for Brutes. Yeah, the... You know, I miss the Claw and the Smash Up, but... It is condensed. I understand the condensing of the profiles um, and what that means for the game overall. Um, but I, I still love brutes. You know, yeah. I, I have seen people that have done math, and I've not double checked it. Um, and they swear by art, big units of art boys. But man, I love brutes. So, and it, a lot of that's a model thing for me as well. They're so beautiful. Not, yeah, they, I mean, that's what sold me on the faction is the brute models. So. Uh, I'll always play Brutes, personally. Agreed. And I think at 140, they're such a steal because they're yeah. such a little... Like, five Brutes is such a pile of hot murder when it gets buffed with that plus one damage. Like, mm -hmm. they make such an insane number of attacks. Yep. They, to me, they get plus one to hit against uh, against things with four wounds or more, which there's plenty of roaming around. Uh, so, like, they automatically are basically on, like, twos and threes for most of the unit. Um... It's just like I I really love everything about them. I still think brutes are absolutely fantastic. Yep. Um, I think pigs got a lot better. Our boys are viable now. That's what I yeah. would say. Yeah. Well, I, I think our boys have been viable since the GHB drop. Um, yes, but they're just but not. Yeah. They weren't before. They weren't before this GHB. Yeah, the pigs got a lot better. I I, I love the new charge rules for the pig. Mm. Yeah. It's, uh, so much better than that. What was it? Roll a ten, may or move ten to it on the charge. It was insane. You had to like you had to you had to move eight inches and roll an eight plus, and it had to be a blue moon on. And you had to be fighting a guy named Steve, <laughs> and Steve had to. It only worked if you were fighting if only if they had corn models, but only a unit under two hundred points. You know, it was just like okay, what? It's never just ignore this rule. Now it's just when they charge, plus one to hit and wound if you're using the longer reach weapon, the gore hacka, and yep. with the pig. And so even if you're not using the Jagged Gore Hacker, which all mine are, are built with uh, the... I shouldn't say all of them. I have a, one unit. It's kind of both. But uh, but with the Pig Iron Choppas. But, like, you still get the plus one to hit and wound on the pigs, regardless of how you're armed, which is amazing. Yeah, and my, my the pigs four are more to wound. Yeah, same. I just feel like the more attacks is worth it, especially when you add in the damage bonus. I, I do like running Brutes with the two-inch reach uh, behind some Ardboy screens. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's some some fun juice in that. That was something we did back when the book first came out, uh, and now it's a tactic again. Or running uh, two inch reach brutes behind another unit of brutes. So uh, when I went over to the UK, Kieran had showed me the power of the two inch reach brutes, and it it's no joke. Sure, um, it it solved a lot of problems that I regularly would run into with the brutes. You know, you just quite can't get in, but then it lets you set the traps. You know, you come into these, now you got my brutes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I mean, overall, what I love about the Iron Jaws is they're such a tight, efficient army because there is no bad units in the army. There just isn't. Like, at this point, we've nailed it. Every unit in this army has a purpose. 
Like, mm. period. There are there are armies I build that might not have some of them in there, right? Just yeah. because of happenstance or because of what I want to do. Right. But there are zero bad units in this army. Yeah, which, and we didn't even talk about weird knob puking to mad as hell, you know, puking on yourself to make yes. yourself move. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Puke on yourself to make yourself move. You get magic, you move. You get shot, you move. You fight, you move. And it's always at the end of the phase, which is fun. Because, yep. like, you can... Uh, you can, if you, if you trigger your own damage on your guys in your hero phase and like put it in the spell through them or, or, you know, puke yep. on them and then you teleport them, they don't move with mad as hell until the end of the phase. So you yep. put them nine away and then they move a D six forward. Yep. Which is, uh, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Uh, yeah. I, I love everything about iron jaws. I don't know what else to say. Any, any other thoughts, anything we didn't hit on in iron jaws? I don't think so. Not for me. They are fantastic. Get into them. They are and continue to be the greatest army in Age of Sigmar. That is my Yeah, I, I think Mad as Hell is one of my favorite rules in yeah. the game. I, I love the name. I love everything about it. Mm -hmm. It's the yeah. one thing that, that people playing the Iron Draws will forget. <laughs> because it's a very, it's like an army you can, you don't have to think a lot about. This is introduced something we have to remember, a triggered thing we have to remember as opposed to like yeah. an active thing we're doing. All right, cool. Let's talk about some bone splitters. Bone splitters. All right, bringing out them Z's. Uh, oh, that's fine. We'll talk about. Uh, let me let me let me say this about Rogue Idol. Because uh, the Rogue yeah. Idol is legal now. He got updated. He got his new war scroll, by the way. He got all the keywords. He got all the keywords. He got his new scroll. He's real good. I don't think he has a place in an Iron Jaws army. That's mm. the that's the thing. I, I don't need another big monster that costs 400 points in this army. I'm already, like, I already have a killier monster that costs 400 points. It's called the Mega Boss on Mock Russia. He does more work. Like, yeah. maybe there's some kind of Dechopis force led by a weird knob that uses one. Maybe. Just to Man, get I, it some additional casting stuff going on. I like him as a bone splitters guy, but yes. yeah, same, not as much as for Iron Jones. Agreed. Yeah. Now, in bone splitters, He's got gas in the engine. Yes, I agree. Like that is where the rogue idol gets real sexy. A hundred percent. Um okay, so let's talk about uh uh bone splitters. So, real quick review of their generic allegiance abilities. So they they as well have three little war clans. We'll talk about all of them in a minute. Tireless trackers. This is one of the most powerful allegiance abilities I've ever seen written down. Here we go. After armies are set up, but before the first battle round begin, half of the Bone Splitter's units in a Bone Splitter's army rounding up can move five inches. That sounds so innocuous. It is so stupidly good. The fact that you can reposition or push half your army out there and get five inches when a lot of games start 18 inches apart yep. and suddenly you're 13 inches apart. The fact that you could pull yourself back, you could like be on the line so they place on the line against you. If, and then suddenly you could just be like, nope, and walk back out of their range. You could pull yourself, you can pull units out of their shooting range, right? Like if they've set up to keep your units exactly in range, nope, you just fade out. And you, or you can put yours even closer to being in shooting range. Exactly. You can get the units you want. Like it is so crazy good. And yes, absolutely. Amago, I just mentioned it. But yes, I was going to say there is, of course, a command trait uh, that allows you to take this up to eight inches. Yes. Which is like, now, I mean, that's so much that's, movement. I mean, the difference deal. between five inches and eight inches is pretty big. That's what she said. <laughs> but um, Ching. Yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, God in heaven, that's a good ability. Like, I just, people, you will be able to tell a great Bone Splitters general by watching how people use that. You know yep. what I mean? Because, like, they will bring spellcasters into spell range. They will move spellcasters out of enemy spell range or out of dispel range. They will move people in and out of shooting. You know, it's just like, mm -hmm. it's so versatile. It's ridiculous. It's so good. Okay. Uh, War paint, standard six up. They've always had that. They, they're unstoppable savage, or sorry, their monster hunters thing is, is now no longer just like a die roll thing. It's a thing you get to choose. Uh, if you're within three inches of a monster, you get to either move an extra three inches when you pile in Cool for getting around big bases, say like the pie plate, where so you can file a lot more guys in as you just want to circle around. 
you can do stab, 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 plus one to hit, or you can do berserk strength, where if uh, any of your attack, uh, or any, sorry, if any of your attacks have a wound roll of six, you do you deal a mortal wound in addition to your normal damage, which can be great for certain things like uh, ethereal velocities, right? Ethereal vampire lords on on zombie dragons. So, yep, yep, uh, good stuff. Uh, yeah, and then, it's, good that it's not random anymore. Absolutely, yeah, it's so much more useful now. They have their own version of the law, works very similar, 11 and 12 and that kind of thing. And they have Spirit of the Beast, where they don't take Battleshock tests if an enemy monster is slain by that unit. And, and it's just unit. important to note that their Wa is only good on melee weapons. Yes. So no boost in the Ruck. Which is what we'll talk about. Like, the power of the Kun and Ruck has been well curtailed. This has been brought back to a melee army. But you still have shooting as support. And by the way, yeah. it's still good. Like and you and can there's still no get reason to take shooting. a rock, I think. So, one hundred percent shooting support. It's just not like the the one of the predictions I had made in in, in the, our like prediction show about this was that things like the cunning rock is and and just like the obsequious dice rolling is going to be well restricted, and that has absolutely happened. Um, you can still roll a lot of dice. This is still a horde army, right? That didn't change. But it's not rock style. It's like not rock style. No, 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 no. It's so much different. Yeah. Um, and this is where we need a note. They, I am so happy. By the way, I don't know who recommended this text go in here. I don't know who from the original designer down through the play testers recommended this text go in here. Whoever it was, I love you. So there you go. Thank you. The extra hits. The extra hits text. This is the kind of sidebar we need more of in this book. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, GW, pay attention right here. This part matters. Put more stuff like this in the books. This is good, okay? This is beyond good. It's great. So, several abilities in this in this in the Bone Split is uh, arsenal give you like the slanesh thing is what I call it, right? Where on a six you go from one hits to two hits or catechism of murder if you're a doc player and you're familiar with that, right? So like if you roll a six to hit, your one hit becomes two hits. Great. There's lots of different things that do that. We have a clarification here. If this happens where two or more of the same abilities apply at the same time, you score one extra hit for each ability. For example, if two such abilities were applied and you rolled a six, you would score three hits for each unmodified six. Perfect. So straightforward. Yeah, it just it yeah. signals the intent, so there's no shenanigans, lawyering about, well, they meant this. Exactly. So clean, so clear, pre-answered, A plus work. Keep it up. Okay. Okay, you can go back to not paying attention now. All right, great. Thank you, GW. Much <laughs> appreciate. We appreciate your time. Um, all right. No, it's it's. I, I read that and I was like, wonderful like it, it made me smile because as a design thing it's so yeah. smart right it's so smooth and clean and tight and answers like all the questions right there on page and we can move on yep yep uh there's some interesting command traits uh obviously we mentioned great hunter i think that's the standout i think mm -hmm. the other one is monster killer which lets them pile in and fight a second time if they're within three inches of monsters which is cool uh makes them an interesting monster killer so that's kind of fun Mm -hmm. uh, but the, I, the shamanic quirks are going to be just as common because you'll have spellcaster generals often enough. And again, it's the same thing. It's like D3 command points or plus one to all casting and unbinding or no and cast an extra spell. I think the Wamonger one has some legs too, um, especially as you get into big Waz. Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm very suspect. So like, this is a thing they've added a bunch, right? It showed up in cities a bunch too, where the whole like roll a four plus and get a command point. Yep. I just, it's hard. Like, I look at that and go, yeah, you're you're not wrong, Domus, because you look at that and you go, okay, on average, we get it two and a half times in a game. So that means you either get it two or three if your dice are your friend, right? So that's worth somewhere between, let's just say it's 100 to 150 points in your army, right? That's kind of a fair thing to say sure. if they're bought for 50. And you're right. That's a lot. But at the same time, like, some of these other things are... are quantifiable in a direct way where you know like it's not as dice dependent absolutely and it, it, it's it's about a direction i mean but you can turn the wargog does it natively right and now you can double up on him yep. at a fungoid and now you've tripled up yep um and and if you're running a big wah and you've run an iron iron sons 
you know, you're going to be looking for those command points for your mighty destroyers. Yeah, agreed. So, so I there's just it, it's just an option. I don't know that it's the the always the go to, but I like it as an option. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chaos Spawn said, "My theory: Savage Big Boss with a sword of judgment and stab, stab, stab is the best foot character monster assassin. I mean, that guy's doing a lot of work. You're not wrong. Giving himself his own plus one to hit. Uh, he's very squishy, but God in heaven, can he? He can generate some uh, some heat. Yes. Uh, okay. So there are three fat three uh, war clans here. Let's talk those through. We got Bone Grinds, Ice Bone, and Drakfoot, which I think everybody knows Drakfoot. It's a burn in everybody's brain." So, uh, Domus, what, what's your feelings on these three? You got any you particularly like, or or what? What's what's your what's your take on them? Well, I, I, it depends. So for me, I'm not really a bone splitters player. Sure. Um, I I think Drakfoot obviously has a lot of a, a neat uses, um, but I don't think bone grins. You know, especially if you're looking ruck, um, you're going to be looking at bone grins because that's the that's adding more sixes. Yep. Um, multiplies hits. Is it always the right answer? No, I've actually even looked at Icebone too, um, because I like the freeze and run ability, yep. letting your boys retreat again, like they used to do. Because I, I I played Ian Spink when I went over to the UK, and man, that dude is a master of of boars in and boars out and board, and he just constantly was jamming you up with those stupid three wound boars. Yep. Um, so I, I really got a lot of respect for that type of shenanigan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think all again, all three of these are compellingly interesting, right? Yep. Um, the bone grins you mentioned the their command ability. I agree. It adds another six to hit. It gives you basically three options for that in most armies as you would build them, so meaning you could triple stack it and one hit will become four. But again, no need to roll the dice, which I love. Yes, cut the dice out. Great, perfect. Thank you. Um, and but their bring it on is very interesting, although although easily defeatable by a lot of units. So, because I've heard a lot of people talk about this. So let's break this one down. Enemy units within 12 inches of any friendly bone grinds units at the start of their charge phase must attempt to charge and must make a charge move if it is possible for them to do so. In addition, any enemy unit within three inches of a friendly bone grinds unit cannot retreat. Which is cool. that's really the power. Of Absolutely. That Absolutely. <laughs> the cannot retreat is amazing. Okay, the first part where they've got a charge is not as good as you think it is, <laughs> right? Okay, why do you say that? All right, I... let me give you two examples here, Tom. One, because it doesn't dictate who they have to charge. Okay, so like okay. they can still charge wherever they want. And two, if I'm playing you and you're bone grins and I've got units that I don't want to charge, that I've moved up to like 12 inches or 11 inches and yep. I don't want to even charge, I'm going to run them. Sure. Right. And if right. they don't have run and charge, they're not eligible to charge. And hence I just shut off your ability and like and, I'll run and just take zero inches of my run and shut off your ability as well. So, I mean, it's still, it's still doing stuff for them because now they've still prevented you from charging right. by you not being forced to charge. Yeah, sure. My point is I, as the offensive player still have actually a decent amount of control over yeah. whether or not I'm going to allow right. that to affect and, I, and that's actually one of the things I really like about it, is that yeah. you still have all the control, um, but, you know, if they can get a unit in the backfield, uh, that's going to cause a lot of problems for sure. any cheapo unit you have sitting back holding objectives, because now you're leaving objectives, potentially, you know. Well, again, I'll run the unit, I move zero sure. inches. Sure. <laughs> you know, like, or I go half an inch, like, but they ran. Like, here's my D6. Okay, I have 50 inches of movement. I use a half inch. Great. You know, like, I mean, it's just one of those things where, like, you can cheap house that rule. But it doesn't matter. The second part of the rule, I agree with what you said at the beginning, Domus, which is, like, the, the, the fact that they stop you from retreating is crazy good. It was the best part of Household Battalion and Sylvaneth. Anytime this thing shows up, it is bonkers powerful. Yeah, because getting retreated on is the worst. Yes. It is. Uh, ice bone is interesting because it can add actually a decent amount of rend. Where like if the unmodified wound roll is a six, you improve the rend characteristic of the attack by one. Yep. <sighs> My problem with that is it would great. Thanks, thanks for the mini plague monk ability. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so now I have to like separate my rolls into different things. You know what I mean? Like I've got this many at rend neg one and this many at rend nothing. 
I always yep. hate stuff like that, but it's not it's not Plague Monk's bad. Don't get me wrong. Like Plague Monk's no. are terrible and that scroll should have been if any scroll should have gotten the the treatment that like this book has where they simplified rules. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that. Okay. Uh but I agree with you. Their command ability where they can like retreat away and subtract move off of the charge, sorry, yeah. of that enemy unit is real good, especially for your boars who are going to get far enough away to just basically leave somebody stranded, right? Uh, yeah, so that's good. And then Drakfoot, obviously we all know Drakfoot, because Drakfoot's the one that Ethereal has no effect on attacks made by a Drakfoot unit. In addition, any ability that negates wounds has no effect on wounds inflicted by a Drakfoot unit. Waiting on that FAQ to see whether or not Marathi is still, is, is going to be one that gets hit by this. Um, she could. There's there's good arguments both ways. I it's, don't care. It, it's still not, you know, the thing about it is not amazing because in, when you look at, start looking at bone splitters, most of their units don't have any rend. Sure. So you're still, you know, most of the ethereal stuff is coming in at a four up armor save. Now you've turned off their ethereal. So guess what happens if they're in cover? They get a save, plus one save. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's good? You know, sure. that can work against you. So, sure. Right. Uh, it also like works against basically every death army out there as negating their, their five. Yeah, up. it turns off like all the six ups. Yeah, I think it's it really it shines I, against like daughters of Cain, like Hagnar. This is a great Hagnar counter because like absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry, were you on four up, five up, five up? No, no, no. You're just on four up. Yes. Enjoy and, that. And in the mirror, you know, bone splitters yeah. on bone splitters. Yep, a hundred percent. Uh so yeah, I mean and it's 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 not that there's no rend, but uh, like there is a unit in this army that has quite a lot of rend, as a matter yeah. of fact, which I'm sure we'll talk about. But you're right; the most of your blocks aren't rend. It's not. It's not super prevalent. Yeah. Yep. Um, it, it is. It is very good though as an answer to Hagnar. Like oh, just yes. as, you know, one of the the single toughest lists in the game is still the Hagnar Witch Elf list, of course. Um, and it ban nine more. Uh, absolutely. Just the mere presence of this, yeah. Uh, will you know will force Hagnar to think twice. Well, like Phoenix Guard are also hit by this. Everybody's been praising Phoenix Guard, right? Because they're four up, four up. Like Phoenix Guard without the four up aren't worth it. <laughs> without the yeah. second four up, you know what I mean? There, there's just a bunch of dead elves. Um, you could have had a better unit, right? So, like, yes, this is a a a big deal. Yeah, Hearthguard Berserker. Somebody mentioned in the comments. Absolutely agreed. Like, Hearthguard are another good example. the The problem with Hearthguard is they can still get to like two ups, you know. Right. And so, like, that's armor. still going to yeah. bounce everything. Yeah. Um, the the other thing I like about Dragfoot is actually their their command trait replacement, where like instead of gaining a command trait, all your casters gain Fireball, which I actually yep. think is a pretty darn good sure. spell. Uh, mm -hmm. where like if you're shooting at units of ten or more models, they have they they have D six mortal wound balls, which is pretty great. It's, it's good. It's pretty good. Uh yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh let's talk about like their their gubbins and their spells. Uh gubbins. Any gubbins that stand out to you? Their uh their magic items. I, I honestly don't love any of them. <laughs> They're all okay. The one that the, the one that's pretty good is the glow and tattoos. When you use the war paint battle trait to negate a wound or mortal wound, it negates the mortal wound or mortal wound on a four up instead of a six. Great for like keeping a general alive, right? Because we mentioned like the idea of having a general who you want to get do something or get in there. Sure, it'll keep him alive much more. A four up feel no pain is pretty strong. Like, they have a Gubbin that I would otherwise love that makes him do, like, double damage on a wound roll of six. The problem yeah. is none of them do, like, great damage. You know, there's nobody swinging around damage six that suddenly becomes 12 or something. You know, it's not it's not that situation. Like, the Savage Big Boss goes from, like, two to four. Yeah, I mean, the, okay. the plus one to cast is always good. Yeah. Yep. And, and the, the third one for the Wizards is actually really interesting. With the 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 wa paint, yep, it's random, but boy, that could be really interesting. Yeah, casting like a breath of Gorka Morka twice. Yes, you know, but one in six chance. You're talking about sixteen percent chance. So, 
Speaking of which, let's just talk about spells, because this is actually the fun part to me. They have some exciting exciting spells. You oh, mentioned yeah. Breath of Gorkamorka. You want to walk us through that yeah. one real quick? Yeah, that's a uh, cast on a six, friendly unit wholly within 24. Um, it doubles the move phase of the target. Um, and then they also get to fly. And if you're if your casting roll was a double, it triples the move of the target. Mm -hmm. well, uh, real good. It, it does have to be a bone splitters unit, so you can't right. do it to the jaws. But man, it's such a good spell. Yep. Yep. Uh the uh I, I'm a big fan of Gorkamorka's War Cry. Uh so that casts on a seven, pick an enemy unit within 18 inches. Inflict D3 mortal wounds, and in addition, that unit fights at the end of the next combat phase. Hello, second itchy nuisance. Yes. Right? Like, that is pretty, pretty good. And as we mentioned earlier, like, you can ally in the dude with the cauldron, and now you've got two itchy nuisances. Like, being able to, uh, being able to make two of their, uh, their units fight last is, uh, pretty good. It's pretty decent yep. as things go. Um... So yeah, I, I dig I dig this lore a lot. I think there's like there's a lot of, of decent stuff. The other one we shouldn't mention is that I think this army gets thought of as like the no armor army, right? That's how we all think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they all have six ups now. Okay. So Cunning Beast Spirits. Casting value of six. If successfully cast, pick one friendly bone splitters unit wholly within twenty four. Big range. Until your next hero phase, add one to save rolls for all attacks that target that unit. Okay, got it. So now let's go talk about... Uh, let's talk about some of our... Where is that? There we go. Let's talk about our basic old Savage Oryx. Okay? The basic Savage Oryx, the main, the main man himself, the tattooed boys, right? Not more boys, just the uh, not the savage orc. More boys, just the savage orcs. Okay, so the uh, savage orcs are the straight battle line unit. They are ten for one twenty or thirty for three hundred. They have two wounds each, so for three hundred points, you're getting sixty wounds, which is amazing. Which is amazing. They have a six up base save, but they also can have a shield, and if they have a shield. You add plus one to save rolls for attacks made with melee weapons that target the unit. If they also get a uh, Con and Beast Spirits, they're on a four up. And they always have their six up because of their tattoos. Meaning that you have 60 wounds in melee on four up, six up. Uh, assuming you're in Bone Splitters and not the Big Wah. Yes, correct. Yes, absolutely. Assuming you're in Bone Splitters. That is a hell of a tar pit like my god yeah absolutely and like this is the kind of unit that if i had an objective that like there are some battle plans where the objectives are within eight inches say i start the game and have that command trait and i go ahead and move that unit eight inches out and sit on that objective and go ah have a good time good luck is what i, I will offer you good luck to get this thing to get them off of this point because uh, that is a lot. That is a lot of wounds and a lot of stuff. So, yeah, that's just something like I like that Con and B spirits a lot. Not to be overlooked, for sure. Um, all right. Cool. Uh, let's see. Nope, wrong guy. All right. Let's talk about battalions next. Yeah, let's talk about some battalions. Yes, we absolutely should. Let's do let's do these battalions. All right. Uh, well, the first one for me is is my favorite, the brutal ruck. Yep. Run and charge. Yep. Yes, please. On board, boys. Yes, please. Uh, yep. Uh, if you're near the, it's two to five units of savage oryx or savage boar boys in any combination, and yes, it gives them all run and charge. I I just talked about why I love savage oryx. Uh, I talked about, and like Savage Boar Boys, I've always thought were a decent pick. Um, the regular Boar Boys, like the, because they're, again, you can go up to 20 of them. They're 130 points. Right? Yep. These guys have a lot of wounds. They're just another great, like, just like they're three wound models, 15 wounds for, you know, 130 points. They're battle line in, in your army. 
uh, if your bone split is or big wah, I might add. And like, they're just, they're fast 12 inch move. Right. They, yeah, I, I like everything about them. I really and, like the warways. And there was another spell we didn't talk about was synergizes with this battalion, which gives you plus one to run plus one to charge plus one to hit on a six. Um, and can affect two units if you hit a double. So then, bam, you know, if you can get two of your units blasted off with this, run and charge with plus one to run, plus one to charge, is, you know, it just starts stacking up. Oh, yeah. And that's, it, it, that's when everything in this book starts to really shine is when you start looking at these synergies. Yep. Uh, I think the cut and ruck is still really good. I, I certainly don't think it's, it's, uh, it's not like the end all be all that it used to be, but it's still quite good. So, yeah, I think it has a lot of uses. Agreed. It's 140 points. It has a Savage Big Boss and then two to five units of Oryx or Savage Oryx Arrow Boys in any combinations. And uh, in your hero phase, pick one unit from this battalion that is wholly within 12 of the Big Boss. This unit can make a normal move or shoot. Units from this battalion cannot have more than 20 models. That's a really smart, clever, interesting restriction. So like for your shooters, your, your, uh, your Arrow Boys are on like fives and fours. They get the bonus now at 15 instead of 20, but obviously in here they can't have more than, than 20, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I like that restriction. Uh, and I think actually the make a normal move is the real power in this. Right, right. Uh, like the shooting is cool. You're going to do that sometimes too, but the fact that you can move either your regular Savage Oryx in your hero phase or uh, your... Now, by the by, if you get first turn that in that scenario I just mentioned... Those savage, that massive savage orc block is anywhere it wants to be, right? Yeah. Like it's it's plus thirteen. Yeah, just and we haven't even gotten to the move phase yet, <laughs> right? They're thirteen yeah. inches out, and we haven't even hit the move phase. Like that's pretty decent as things. Oh, another move five. Yeah, so it is, it would be thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly right. So then they actually move eighteen. Maybe they run. I mean, like they're just they're everywhere they want to be as far as like just holding and sitting on an objective. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the other one that's probably worth mentioning is Tief Ruck because big stabbers are amazing. So yeah. Tief Ruck is one savage big boss and two to five savage big stabba units. And you add one to the attacks characteristic of the stabbers while they are wholly within 12 inches of the big boss. <sighs> Anything that gives those dudes attacks is uh pretty yeah. pretty good it's, it's frightening <laughs> it is indeed like just to refresh everybody on savage big stabbers because this is the absolute nutcracker of the army four wound models five inch move six up save that giant gork tooth that they wield the big stab itself range three inches which is amazing it's huge. It's so huge. Like they can fight over the top of people. Remember, they if they're fighting a monster, they could also pile in six. So like they can get way around and stab somebody off to the side, right? They can Tokyo drift way around and suddenly hit another unit that thought it was safe because it was like nine inches away from where these idiots started, <laughs> right? But they're still getting stabbed. <laughs> Tokyo drift. Yeah, just like that is you are like Han just coming in, baby. Uh, so there are three attacks on threes and threes, neg two rend, uh, D three damage. If the target is a monster, they go to D six damage. They have built in run and charge. Uh, and if they die, you roll a die and on a four up, they get to do, uh, D three mortal wounds. If it's, and it's a two up if it's a monster. I had one of these units damn near kill a mock crusher in one turn. Sure. They're brutal. <laughs> No, they're, they're, so they're all, it's a nightmare. Uh, and the fact that like the fact that you can put them in a T fruck and get that plus one to attack. Uh, yeah. it, Two it, to five it, units of them. It's, yeah. Yeah. So yes, exactly. Two to five units of them. And a, and a single unit of big stabbers is, is, is two dudes. Okay. Suits two big stabbers and they, you can have up to eight in the, in the unit. Um, and yeah. they're a hundred points each. hundred and T is 140. Yep. So, uh, ironically, they're like the only thing that isn't battle line if. <laughs> like, everywhere. Like, they are the one unit. Uh, I guess besides like Iron Skulls boys, but whatever. They're the um, wild riders of this book. They are. They're the... <laughs> they can't go battle line. 
and I don't care. They are so stupid brutal. No, oh, they're yeah. I mean, they're they're a one plus easy. You know, any army, Absolutely. any bone splitters army. Yep. Yeah. Um, I love them. The uh, we should talk about the six stacking a little. So, like your yeah. your uh, your savage big boss, his command ability activates the six becomes two hits, and your maniac weird knob, his spell which casts on a seven, bone spirit. He yeah. he, he gets you with that bone spirit. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. bone spirit away, buddy. He also gives you the sixes become two hits, right? And the um, bone grins command ability gives you the sixes become two hits. So if you put all that together, uh, every six can become four hits. Four hits. Which, um, you know, pretty pretty decent, I would say. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They may not be re-rolling a lot of, like, the hit rolls, but they're going to be re-rolling a whole lot of wound rolls. Well, what will happen is they'll roll a bunch of dice, miss with some number like half, right, or whatever. A lot of, a lot of things in the army are on four up. And then they'll be like, all right, uh, I made 20 attacks. I hit with 10 of them and I hit 22 times. <laughs> right? right? Like that's that's the real math, like yep. how things will often work out. That's a, that's a very low number. I'm assuming there's only a few of these guys in combat, right? Um, but uh, yeah, like they're, it's, it's really strong, all of that stacking you can do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like it on the pigs. Yes. Yep. Because they're rocking in with five attack space. Three and two. Yep. Absolutely. The um, I want to give a shout out here as well to we mentioned the Wargog Prophet. Obviously, he's very strong because he can generate, you know, additional command points, and he has his own built-in neg one to hit and stuff like that. Like he's a good wizard. He's a double caster. His he's, spell is legit. His spell is legit. Yeah. Fist of Gork. He's a gong summoner. Yep. Yeah. Cast on a five. Pick an enemy unit within 24. Roll a number of dice equal to the number of models in that unit. For each six, they suffer a mortal wound. If the casting roll was 10 plus, which is achievable in multiple ways. As we mentioned in, in De Big Wah, this becomes real scary where you can start burning off wall points to get bonuses. In Iron Jaws, he's a great ally for Iron Jaws. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you it becomes a four plus instead of a six to deal the mortal wounds. He goes he goes full gaunt summoner. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Uh, I want to give a special commendation though to the war doc. Okay. okay. War doc. He's my big wa pick of the week. I don't like him in a. I don't care about him in a bone slit his army, but I love him in a big wa. So he's like an eighty point caster. He's very cheap. I love him as the only bone split as model in an Iron Jaws army in Big Wah. Okay. <laughs> Let me explain why. Two of his dances don't do anything. We should add here, by the way, that the War Doc does have a dance to add one to your save. So on a three up, that four plus six up unit I mentioned becomes three up, six up. Uh, can you say tar pit? Okay. But at any rate, um, in a, in, I, I like him because that save bonus is amazing. But also, even if he's alone, like in an all-Iron Jaws army, he has a dance he can do where he can pick himself. And on a three-up, he adds one to the casting, dispelling, and unbinding rolls for that wizard until your next hero phase. So he can self-buff. And then he can take, like, an item that gives him plus one to cast. And now he's a built-in plus two caster. And, yeah, he doesn't have any of his own spells. Like, that is to say, he doesn't, like, he doesn't get... He doesn't actually have a spell besides Arcane Bolt and Mystic Shield. I don't care. Spells fall out everywhere. I don't need spells because I can give him, say, like the fight last ability and suddenly have yep. have make people fight last in a uh, Iron Jaws Big Wall army. And I think that's pretty sweet. And you can you can sack WA points for even more plus to cast. Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. I'm just reading through the chat. All right, I was over on. I was over. I brought up the Rogue Idols War Scroll, so we can also discuss him here. Okay, so let's talk about the new War Scroll for the Rogue Idol. He has all the keywords. He's Bone Split us. He's Orc. He's everything. So he's great. He's Iron Jaws. He's 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 rocking it all. I want it all. Uh, so his Boulder Fist make two attacks on threes and twos. Neg two ran D six damage. 
His stomping feet make 10 attacks at 3 up, 3 up, neg 2 ren, 2 damage. He's Those a 16 wound. Those are some dancing feet. Those are some dancing feet. 16 wound, 4 up save model with a 10 inch move and a 5 up feel no pain. He has his own built in Skaven Cheaty for 5 up against all wounds or mortal wounds, which is pretty great. In addition, we've mentioned a lot of casting in Bone Slitters because they, you know, that's kind of their traditional thing, right? They have the, the shamans and seers letting him go. And he adds plus one to the casting rolls for friendly orc wizards and friendly grot wizards while they're within six inches of him. He also buffs bravery. Uh, so like we mentioned, the the brute thing or whatever, he also buffs bravery. Uh, you can reroll hit rolls of one for him if he charged, which is pretty good. And uh, at the end of the combat phase, you roll a die for each enemy unit within three inches of him. On a four plus, they take a mortal wound. Cool. He is a very damaging model. I think he is a sweet big monster in the Bone Splitters army. Yeah. And he has that sweet mask for the, yeah. the model that actually like fits well with the Bone Splitters. Yes. I think here he fits really well. I really do. Like in a Bone Splitters army, I think he's quite good. He is a big threat that people have to answer while all your boys can just swarm around and take points. And yeah, because like you have all the cheap bodies. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, absolutely. All right. Anything else we need to say about Dem Splitters? They're good. I mean, I, they, I, I, I really like the new version of Bone Splitters. They cut out a lot of the, like, insane dice rolling. It's very interesting. They can swamp with bodies. They're, they're relatively cheap. I think, again, a lot of these units have, uh, a lot of potential. Like, even some of the things that didn't get played before. But the, the base foot units are still really good and will probably still be the bulk go-to. But things Free like the boars board. and the big boar boys and the, uh, yeah. the like the maniac war boys actually have a lot of potential now too. Like there's there's so much, uh, there's mm. so much good in this army. Yeah. And cool. All right. Cool. Well then, gentlemen, there's only one more thing to discuss before we end our time with the Iron Jaws, and that's Da Big Wa. Domus, would you like to take us through Da Big Wa? Uh, yeah, the big Wa is is pretty awesome. Um, that you get abilities based on Wa points, and you earn Wa points based on um, a couple of rings. You get D6 to start, unless you have Gordrak, then you get six. You get two for every War Channer. You get one for every War Gog and War Dock. Um, and then in the charge phase, you get some for Orcs, and, or and then you get Orc Heroes at the combat phase. Um, and then there's a, also a command ability you get that lets you spend a command point um, and you receive one wall point for every 10 orcs within 12 inches of that or 18 if he's your general um, or a war channer. So you can pretty quickly rack up some wall points and get going. And those are important because um, if, at the wall point levels, you get different stuff at four plus. What do you get at the end of any phase? Um, if you've suffered any wounds on an orc unit, and it's more than nine inches away, it gets to move D6, so it gets mad as hell. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, at six, you get the Wa Magic, and the Wa Magic is the one that lets you um, reduce your Wa points by D3 for plus one to cast a spell and unbind, or by D6 for plus two. Yep. Um, and the neat thing about that ability is it says uh, any friendly wizard. So if you had a, a Grot in your army, you can buff him as well if he's gone Arachno Cauldron, Itchy Nuisance. Um, and you can get plus two for that guy. And I think the cauldron gives you plus one, doesn't it? Uh, it does. Yeah, so so now you're on plus three. Uh, I think it's he's a six, so. It sounds like you're going to get it all. You're going you're gonna to be <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's likely. Um, let's see, what happens at eight? Eight, you get plus one to charge for all orcs. Yep, and this is all orcs. The key is, remember, you can yep. have bone splitters and iron jaws here, and they're getting each other's ability. And a rogue idol. Yep. yep. And at six, you get the tattoo save um, for all orcs, so which is awesome for Iron Jaws. Oh my god, Iron Jaws with the tattoo save is amazing. The six it's, up feel no pain. It's so good. I mean, you lose, you get, you lose smash and bashing, and you lose mighty destroyers. But yeah. man, um, so at sixteen, you get plus one to hit with all orc units. Mm -hmm. So again, Iron Jaws path uh, at twenty wa points, you get plus one to wound. Yeah. And then at 24, you get the big Wah ability. Oh. Yeah. And what so, 
So I'm going to disagree here strongly with Chaos Fawn in the chat who said Big Wah is a trap. Totally disagree. I think Big Wah has absolute gas in the engine. We didn't talk about Gordrak. I'll talk about him here. Gordrak is a monster now. He is a monster. Yeah. Um, he is very expensive. But he is so brutal, especially if he gets a War Chant buff because he starts with 10 attacks base with yep. his two choppas. His yep. and, and his Maul Crushers has one more attack base. He's at 9 instead of 8. He's making 19 attacks. His damage goes bananas with yeah. plus one. Um, he pushes you to six. I built a, a, a list that I shared on Doom and, on the Doom and Darkness Unlocking that at turn one puts you to 16, uh, puts you to 16 uh, wall points. In your hero phase first turn, you're at 16 wall points. With the commit, was that with the command ability with the command or ability, no? Yeah, by, okay. by using the command ability. And yep. by the way, still has mighty destroyers. Yeah. Because I use an Iron Fist. Because you use an Iron Sun Battalion. Yeah. 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 And so you can still get uh you can still get that going. And you have like suddenly your whole army, whole army right away is at plus one to hit. By the time you actually charge and fight, you could be at twenty. Yep. <laughs> and now your yep. army in battle round one is on twos and twos. And like you can big wall all over the place because yeah, you you might cut your wall points in half. You'll just keep shooting up, back up yeah. to like thirteen. You'll gain like thirteen to sixteen every round, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I I I wouldn't auto use it though. It definitely to me is is something you have to look at and weigh. Um, but it's an amazing tool in the toolbox. Absolutely. I'm interested, Chaos Spawn, as to why you think you lose your general on the first turn. I'm interested in that. I don't know what that. I don't know why you, why you say that, as opposed to the other ones. Um, what's interesting about? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Uh, if you want to, if you want to share, I might be missing something. Their, yeah, their command ability is pretty easy to just stack up a bunch of wall points. The wall magic thing is great. The interesting part about their uh, de big wall is that it's not uh, limited to once per per battle, right? It, it, it the, the big wall one, their wall can be used multiple times. The key is you just have to risk the wall points being killed. Yeah, yeah. But again, right. if you're in like a generation machine where you're putting 12 to 13 to 16 wall points on the board every round, okay. You know, like it's, you're still it's, pretty it's safe. It's a worthwhile risk. I think like if I had a risk. tournament reroll, I'd be all over it too. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, and the key is you still get your command traits, artifacts, mount traits, war chant or war beats, and spell lores from the source thing, right? So right. your general, like if it's not, like Gordrak can still take the mount trait. He can still be a weirdin, which is amazing. You can give Gordrak the four up spelling lore. That's why he's yeah. good, by the way. Like that mount trait is what pushes him over into being good. Um, and you can still buff the heck out of him with everybody else. The you can still take your war beats. You can still take you know all. You can still take the destroyer. You, blah and blah 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 blah. Right. Um. So like you you can harvest a lot of the best stuff. You do lose smash and bashing out of Iron Jaws, which is mm -hmm. which is rough. Right. And mighty destroyers. I and mean mighty destroyers. You can build yeah. back in mighty destroyers, but you're right. Yeah, one, once, but yes. Yes. You could technically do it twice if you, you could, didn't yeah, take Gordrak and took the I regular mean, general instead. Yeah. But I'm taking Gordrak into Big Wall. I can't help myself. What what are we talking about here? Gordrak on all twos, all the way down. Oh, ho, ho, ho. now you had you had my attention, but now you have my interest. With strength from victory. Yes. With strength from victory. Well, and his is even better, so. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I Gordrak is very expensive. Like, let's let's be Let's let's play Tom here and be very clear, right? Five forty, right? Uh, he's five forty. Yeah. yeah, that's right. But keep in mind, all of these big wall abilities also buff Gordrak. Plus one to hit and wound. Plus one to charge. Six up, feel no pain, right? Like, yep, <laughs> pretty good, pretty good stuff. Uh, so like I, I really like the big wall. My honestly, I've built a lot of lists in Iron Jaws, and then said like. Well, how would that work in Big Wall? And some lists yeah. can just play in both. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And they just are interesting in how they work in both of them. And and I think if I was at a sideboard tournament, I would be I would potentially 
have a very similar list, but one would be why and one would be not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, this made me go, ooh, boy. Like, maybe I want to get, maybe I want to bring my Iron Jaws back to NashCon for a second time where I could, I could do an Iron Jaws list on one side and a Big Wall list on the other just because it would be so much fun. To totally. Be able to it's, switch a it up. It's, a, it's a different allegiance you wouldn't be able to allow to. Oh, they don't let you do that. Oh, that's right. Yes, they are technically different allegiances now. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Darn it, David, no. change that rule. You can only no. be out of one book. <laughs> hey, I got it. Yeah, I mean, Take it, David. Here we go. Uh, but yeah, it's a good point. Uh, Jack from Reeling Once had act, asked about like using Gordrak in a in a in a sort of uh, Grand Alliance destruction army. Because his command ability is, you can use his command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick up to three friendly destruction units wholly within 24 inches, and you add one to hit rolls. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, it's okay. My answer is, right now, as it stands, you only lose by going to Grand, or- Grand Alliance Destruction. Just go Big Wah. You get all the good stuff. Ogres aren't, you're not losing anything by not having ogres right now. Now, right. see me again in like, let's say a month when there's a Maw <laughs> Tribes book, and I may have a different opinion. Okay. Right. Um, especially if they, if they keep like a Bragoff's Beast Hammer or something like that in the Maw Tribes book, then I may have a completely different opinion. So just to be fair, right now, my answer is no, ogres don't add anything. They just weaken the, what could be a great big wah. So, but that is very, very, very subject to change. Yes, absolutely. That that <laughs> that statement has a has an expiration date stamped on the side like cottage cheese. Like it's it's not gonna last long. <laughs> that one's that one's uh it's gonna go it's gonna go rancid real fast. Uh, all right. Does it, does it have any juice with trolls? Now I gotta look. I don't think so. I mean, you can already ally the gets, right? So, I mean, the, the trick is the ogre is the only thing you can't ally into. Um, yeah, I know. I just was looking at so trolls do hit on a three. Yeah, the dank holds. Mm, yeah, but dank holds really. Well, I'm looking at the other ones, the rocks too. Sure. I'm looking at those. I, I like the rock trolls myself. They're, they're, I do. Yeah, I yeah. like Rockies. They but, not as, three. but as allies, though. But again, like as yeah, allies, you're not getting out, I'm just wondering if, if you went a destruction trollish army. I mean, you still have to have some battle line. I'm just I'm yeah. just trying to follow that train of thought. Sure. I, I don't know. I, don't, I still am with you. I think at the end of the day that I'm going Big Wah uh, and take Goblin Allies. Yeah. I do like, though, that, that the keyword ally is now Gits. Yes. So we have access to the entire book, including the spider fame. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, it's a big change. And, and the is. allies are We're exactly what you would expect. Support. Right. Like the allies are iron jaws, get bone splitters and gets bone splitters, get iron jaws and gets, and the big wall gets, 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 get, get them gets, get, get, uh, yeah. And that's the big wall. I love how simple and yet absolutely fat and like fantastic it is. You and talk summoning. Um, well, you mean like with the art fist, or that's it? Yeah, like because that's it. The that's it. Yeah, that's true. yeah, that's that's really like the rumored big wah summoning nonsense. Mm-hmm. Nope, was nonsense. Was nonsense. There is no like you can summon back with the art fist like you always could, but there's no. It's a good point to mention, Tom. You're absolutely right. Because, right. like, there was a prediction about it. It, it circulated forever that, like, oh, Big Wah is going to let you summon. And everybody was like, I do, do not want. Well, do not have. Guess what? Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah, yeah hey. it, w- it wouldn't have been right for orcs to be summoning. It just, uh, like, I get the stretched narrative of, like, more and more boys get attracted to the fight. But, nah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, nah, I'm good. They nah, already joined I'm- the Wah. If they were that close... To where they could show up in the span of the battle, they already joined the wall. <laughs> I, I like that the book's focus is, "Hey, you've got good combat troops. Let's make them better." Yep. Yeah. Um, controls move faster. Um, no, I don't think there's anything in here that would affect trolls that would get them moving. Unfortunately, no. But you could, if you took a troll and an allied shaman, 
Yeah. Then there is a hand that the or an allied uh, fungoid. He can get the hand spell with the cauldron. I mean, that's a lot of points. Yeah. You're It'd be most of your allies to get like yeah the trolls, yeah. the shaman, and the and the cauldron. But you can do it. It is better off teleporting to mega boss on my crusher. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you want to see, by the way, an example of this mega boss, what we're talking about in action, you can go watch Doom and Darkness's latest battle report, where in a single battle, that mega boss on Maw Crusher killed sixty dryads, twelve Kurnoth hunters, nice. uh, and then and then a smattering of characters as well. And like he went down in the last battle round, just pulling everything with him. I mean, he just like swung around the table, murdering that those trees, just making kindling, and it was glorious. <laughs> Stupid trees. Stupid trees. Stupid trees led by a fake god. That's what they get. The appropriate destruction they deserve. Vince, you're my new best friend. <laughs> Did we just become best friends? I Absolutely. think we did. Absolutely, we did. <laughs> she is a fake. She's a dirty harlot. She stole the man's spear. That's right. That's fired. Right. She's fired. Get out of here. Get She's her out fired. of here. Get her out of here. That's right. Um, Although my, my city's list does use her. So. Uh, you go in Living City or something? Yeah. It's it's Alario, Orion, uh, three units of Sisters of the Thorn, three units of Wild Riders. Nice. And Emerald Life Swarm. And a command yeah. point, and then you know the nomad general, uh, and then basically yeah. they deep strike turn one, and they both shoot, they both charge. The tree, yep. the dirt two makes you strike last. Yep. Um, and like then, it. and then plug and pray that that life swarm will keep you in the game. <laughs> but, that's all the I mean, Alario heals. She summons. She heals. She'll take the healing yep. spells. You know, there's a lot of ways to to heal that city's army. That's very funny. It's Reroll true. ones, yes, absolutely. Jack mentioned that you can watch that same mega boss get smoked by twenty blight kings on rerolling <laughs> ones. Uh, then that me then that mega boss on Maw Crusher was not built correctly because twenty blight kings should bounce off of a good mega boss and accomplish a hot nothing, and then he should turn them into paste. You know, you know what I'm looking forward to is I'm looking forward to, to the endless sea of new Iron Jaw players to teleport their uh, Maw Crusher into you on turn one, and then he's dead. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> if not, like he's such a piece you have to use correctly. Yeah, right. He is. You know, people always like again to go to go back to a rant I had earlier in the show where I talked about like people were always like, oh, the Mega Boss, this 14 wound, blah 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 thing, is so easy to remove. And like, did it? Did he occasionally get shot down in turn one? Yeah, that happened in games occasionally. But like, most of my tournament experience with him was hiding him behind the line. Yeah, you know, uh, moving him up and then bringing him in, like basically on turn two to just start plowing through things. Mm -hmm. Like that guy was an A plus for me every game. Uh, sometimes he would let me down because his rolls were real swingy because of how his attacks were built. That sure. should not be as much of a problem anymore. Yeah, and, and I, I think that once you get that initial learning curve of, you know, he, mm -hmm. can't, he can't do anything without the army, so right. don't separate him. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's such a big hurdle because you want to. You want to shove that thing down everybody's throats. Eat this cabbage, yep. fool. Yes, and, and it's just that's – nope. Don't do that. <laughs> like <laughs> Exactly. Don't do that. Yeah. That's just not how it plays. Right, you want some support for him. He can operate more independently than many things, but he mm -hmm. should still have support. Like yeah. I always liked having pigs near him. They can keep up with him. They can they can either screen him and then he comes yep. in behind, or they can countercharge what charges him. Like it works synergistically both ways, and they're good at getting him unstuck. Right, they can move in, pin whatever charged him. He retreats off and go does something later, or or whatever. Right, yeah. So, yeah. Rock and roll. Domus, any final thoughts on the Jaws or I love it. War Clans? Agreed. I love it. Somebody want to paint some more orcs for me? <laughs> I, have, I have so many projects. I've got Adepticon Terrain coming back up. I'm trying to do this, finish this spec. Um, cool. I'm doing another kind of secret project uh, oh, for a thing. Yeah. And and then I, you know, I have I have a Sun Ash army that I've always wanted to paint. Um so it's just too many projects. And I'm trying to finish my living cities now too. Sure, sure, sure. 
Yes, and your Orion is awesome. So I do want to see that on the table at some point. That better show up at a tournament I'm at. Well, uh, that's that's the whole deal. It's the my army is the wild ride. You know, that's yes. the I bought all of that stuff to play an Orion led wild rider army at the end of eighth edition. Yeah. Um, and it's and it's finally coming out. It's, my soul was broke a little bit when Wild Riders couldn't be battle line. Because then I would have just done Orion and nine units of Wild Riders. And sure. it would have been done. That's the army. Not great, but man, it would have been fun. But no, you gotta have Sisters of the Thorn. You gotta have cheap, efficient spellcasters. God. Yeah, I know. That's why I was like, it's it's a better unit. No, come on. <laughs> Don't make me play with a better thing. Darn it. Oh, uh, right on. Tom, any final thoughts, buddy? No. Like, I think I think they're in a lot better place. Yes. Like, and like this is why I haven't piped in a lot, is because obviously you guys are super dialed in and super excited. I think they're in a lot better place. Think? I think that you will see a resurgence of bone splitters. Yeah. Um, they've had a presence. Uh I think Iron Jaws will definitely be out there in force. Um and I think that people are going to get surprised by this army. I actually think that people are going to get caught like with that, with the wrong expectations of what it can do, especially like with like a well-timed, well-executed smash and bashing. Um, I think that they will, they're going to wreck some face. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny, just real quick note on that, Tom, I saw a breakdown where somebody was going through month by month for the tournaments and doing a breakdown of the most percentage of armies appearing in tournaments, not like at the top, just in general. Sure. Right. And Stormcast are still number one, which isn't too surprising, right? They're the most commonly available army. But, like, Iron Jaws was, like, number four, just on count of appearance. Nice. Uh, and that was pre this book, by the way, because that was, like, the information for... I've September always said it's the most fun army in the game. Yeah. So, And it's a relatively low model count, so it's not, like, a huge commitment. It's very, it's very forgiving for new painters. You can make some great-looking Iron Jaws, even if you're a newer painter. Um, and new players, because even still, it's still not, you know, there's still not a giant digest of rules you have to right. know and nope. right to play the army. Yeah, it's a very friendly, it's it's the Othello army where it's like a minute to learn, but a lifetime to master because they do have a very high skill ceiling where you can, you can really, when you understand how to exactly and properly use your units, you see those skill dividends get paid. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right. Well. I think that brings us to the end. That is the Auric War Clans. Very excited about this one. I, I thank you to everybody, to all the designers. I think this was Sam on this one. I don't know if it was or wasn't. I don't know if they say. I don't know if they credit people like that. Whoever was behind it as lead designer, thank you. For all the playtesters, everybody, you gave me the book I always wanted. I couldn't be happier. It's wonderful. This, is, this has been... Uh, I thought this month I saw a new Iron Jaws book and the city's book, and I was like, yeah, those are cool. I ordered them, and I wasn't too excited. I ordered them because I have both the armies, and like one is more an army my friend plays. Wouldn't you know it, two weeks later, I'm plotting out new Iron Jaws conversions, thinking of taking them back to tournaments, and I'm building a city's army. I don't know how to that like that is a that right there tells you you're 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 winning with your design. So well done. I'm glad you're happy. I, I love it. Uh, I'm totally biased because I got to work on it. But, um, I love it. So. You did a great job. You and everybody well, else. I, I just I just play test. I don't write rules. I understand. Thank you for that. Thank you to everybody. This is I love these two books. This is what I think we all want to see. Like this is it's such a happy yep. time uh, right now. This has been a great month. So uh, more sure. to come. Well, there you go. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. As always, we appreciate you watching. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye, everyone.